Hello. Hello everybody. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing, testing. One, two, three. <sighs> so at the moment we're trying to set a title for this broadcast, but I guess we have to reprogram Twitch. <laughs> That's the only good way. <laughs> yes. So ten minutes, counting down. Setting up our computers. Yeah, so basically our setup is our splash screen, which is uh, really awesome. Yeah, so then, drawn by a really great artist. Yeah. Then um, our faces. Yeah, man. Hello. <laughs> Hi, handsome. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for another one, right? <laughs> and then our computer view, which is like this. So, okay. It's drawing stuff. Mm -hmm. And. So stream setup is okay. okay, and before Hello World, we actually have to Into do a lot of like, introduction. installing. So installing and uh, setting up the environment. So we can go from um, John, then uh, what's this? Uh, the setup. Maybe we can call it just the environment setup. We don't have to be specific about what we're we installing. Maybe somebody else wants to use uh, Eclipse or just Notepad. Oh, okay, then you yeah. can just go for environment. Or if I make typos, just yeah. say. Yeah, just say. that's cool. Uh, environment setup. Okay, then we're gonna. Import our first framework, right? Yeah, then we're starting to install plane. Yeah, I guess we can call that the hello world. Uh, and okay, uh, should we just go for like hello world and play framework? Or something? Yeah, that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. So is everything uh, readable on the stream? I mean, like the goals and our uh, faces and <laughs> the lack of boobs seems to be the main main issue in this chat currently. Mm, uh, maybe I can do it a little bit better. One moment. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, almost, almost, almost. No boobs. No, Still no boobs. But yeah, lack of boobs is actually a major industry uh, as a problem currently in IT anyway. You know that there are uh, many kind of movements that try to like fight the lack of boobs in this industry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of uh, groups that support uh, uh, girls that are programming. Uh, in Italian, for example, there are groups called uh, Codes. It's like a goddess, but they write it code, Codes, and it tries to unite different kind of. Uh, Girls and, and ladies who <laughs> like programming. Like combine all the boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, this thing called Rails Girls. Uh, Rails Girls is kind of a community where uh, anybody can join, but it's mostly oriented at uh, females. Uh, the idea is that if you work in another field, it doesn't have to be IT fields, you can work in retail or wherever, and you want to try out uh, programming, then there's, uh, they have assembled uh, these uh, people who are really good at teaching uh, web application development to people who have no coding experience. So they put together this uh, group of 30 people who know nothing about coding, usually women. Not, not to say that women know less about coding. <laughs> uh, I think there have been some kind of guys there as well, but the group is called uh, Girls on Rails, I guess. And, and then they teach them how to program. That's a perfect uh, name for a porn. <laughs> <laughs> Major support for you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm just joking around. Mm -hmm. Girls are awesome if they know how to program. It's They're awesome anyway. Yes. So, cool. <laughs> so I think we can start with the uh, installing of Vita. Sure. Yes. So basically, this is our chosen uh, development uh, uh, tool. It is. Uh, what are it is? Intelligent uh, development, development environment. environment. I think so. Editor? Editor? Editor, maybe. 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 I think, think this is the perfect part. <laughs> that what, uh, what major majority of the stream will be like is like we find out something that we don't know about and we just Google it. Yes. That's how a lot of developers work. So, we want to know what is an 
yes. Integrated development model. Integrated. We, were, it's, we were close. We're this it's, close. It's, it's not intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They are quite intelligent, actually. They yeah, they are. So yeah. much stuff. And that's why we use them. Because we have done. Right. Yes. Anyway, um, we're going to try to do this in Java. Maybe we should go by our uh, list, as in the stream setup seems to be okay. Maybe uh, to if you have anything to say about the stream, so just uh, about the audio levels or the quality or, or the webcam or anything, just uh, write in the stream chat yeah, and yeah, just let us know. we're reading at the same moment and we will make our best to, to make you happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So I guess we can start, right? No, uh, yeah, we're gonna run the environment and see what happens. Make ah. make our maybe That's projects and uh, uh -huh. put them to Git and so on. So okay. basically, what the, what we've already done is uh, set up our Git uh, account, yeah. GitHub account. Uh, it's something that doesn't have to be done. Um, uh, Git is basically a version control system. The idea is that if you screw something up, then you can always go back to a save point where everything was fine. And you can also share the code with other developers in the team. Um, yeah, so we made the project uh, open source, so yeah. anybody can come and download the thing, download the code and, and yeah. start from there. Yeah, maybe we can actually show it a bit. Let's see, it's over here. All oh, right, I found it. The idea is uh, GitHub. Uh, it's kind of a site where you can pull up your repositories. That means your code, and other people can uh, have a look at it, or they can improve it, uh, or they can share it. For example, we made this account, uh, Programming Archon. So we're the Programming Archon. Yeah, we're very much StarCraft inspired. Yay! <laughs> go day 9 go this, let's go out of this. <laughs> totally. <laughs> much respect. And this is our currently totally uncustomized page, and we have just made our first project here. And all the code that we're going to that we're, we'll write uh, will be available here as well. So github.com slash programmercon slash playclimber. Playclimber is our first project. Um, the name uh, play uh, refers to the framework that we're going to use. That means the technology. And the climber will be then the project name. Yeah, so basically we want to make an interactive uh, game mm -hmm. where you have to climb really high mm -hmm. and uh, it should be MMO so everybody who comes to the website uh, should yeah. be able to play it. Yeah, should immediately be able to play it. That's the kind of thing that we want to reach. That it won't be just us writing code and then you viewing the code and stream. What we want to see, uh, do is that we write a new feature. It might be just a minim minimalistic change and we want to put it up on the server so that whoever was watching the stream can immediately co go and actually try it out. Yeah, and play play with us and, and yeah. suggest the uh, next, uh, next feature, feature and so on. Yeah, totally. So this interactive uh, programming is our goal. Basically. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so that people who actually watch the stream will have more value than the people who go to YouTube later and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our main goal is to get better at programming, so yeah. that's our slogan, be a better programmer. <laughs> is, is it there? Awesome, awesome. awesome. No. <laughs> that's kind of a reason why you can't let developers make uh, design <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's make a bag. <laughs> a, a bag. A bag is a, a running inside joke. I'm sure we can cover that in, in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, what do we want? We don't want anything else. Oh, it's okay. So again, all of the software that we're using is totally free. Anybody mm -hmm. can just download it and start the same thing. Yeah, there are no barriers. So there's also no excuses. Yes. <laughs> Go start programming. <laughs> um, I guess we're at the 12 minute. I mean, it's full hour. Is it? Yeah. It's not yet. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a minute. It's a minute. Uh, so. Do we do? Well, we try to so, uh, are we gonna install the play network after the introduction then? So it's environment setup. We already got the idea. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we connect it to the kit? Uh, you mean the 
uh, in that project. Oh, we just make the project under the git uh, yeah, the yeah, git folder. Totally. Awesome. So we're set. Think so. Let's go to Done. our splash screen. Down, down, down. So guys, this is the first time we're doing this, so we're totally be gentle. Noobs. Be, be gentle. <laughs> but be harsh and say if something's not working. And yeah, so totally. If you, see, if you see us making a typo in the code, if you see us uh, implementing something that should not be done, or we're doing something completely wrong, then you should feel free to immediately let us know. Yeah. All the null pointers and all the missed uh, semicolons? Is it semicolons? Yeah. yeah, it is. Awesome. So, English is not our native language, mm -hmm. and that's, that's part of the purpose we put this up, so yeah. to practice our English skills as well. Yeah, yeah. this is totally another, another, another benefit. Awesome. Okay, so. we're at the 20 minute mark, so we can, we can start. Yeah, I guess we can start. So, uh, maybe a, uh, we can take the splash screen away, right? Hello everybody, my name is Sais, and, and I'm Max. Hello, Matt. <laughs> Hello, Seth. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Awesome. I'm great. So basically, we're going to start programming in Java, and we want to make a game, a climbing game. Mm -hmm. And uh, since this is the first stream, I think we should uh, introduce our really awesome... Uh, uh -huh, somebody already linked us something cool. Smooth jazz cover of the Nyan Nyan. Awesome. That's great. We'll, have, we'll leave it at we'll leave that playing in the background. So, our slogan be a better programmer is the thing we're driving for. Yeah, we want to be a better programmer and we want our viewers to become better programmers. And that's this stream. Hello. Hello. So, I was Sais. Yes, and I was Max. Awesome. Most of the time, we're gonna look at this screen. Yeah, this is our uh, basically desktop view. Um, a bit of uh, uh, maybe introduction to this uh, desktop view. And on this right side, we have this kind of list thing. You can see it here, right? And we try to uh, put up all the tasks or goals that we are currently working on. So, you know, whenever you jump into the stream, you can easily uh, see that what are we working on. And what uh, we previously worked on. Yeah, exactly. You can see all the flow of the idea. So basically, today we have this uh, stream set up, and we're currently working on the introduction. It's really tough. Nah. Whoa, it's, it's <laughs> hard work, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and from on, from on, on from there, we will try to set up development environments and do a basic hello world example in a framework. So basically, all of the technologies that we're going to use are free, and uh, thus you can download them and start the thing yourself, basically. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the, no barriers, you can just uh, download it free and get started with us. So, um, so we're also sitting uh, behind a pair programming station. So, what is pair programming? Um, hmm. <laughs> That's a really fun question. So basically, I'm going to show our setup. That's uh -huh. the best thing to describe it, I think. Yeah, so I'm taking my web camera. So basically, this is our setup. This is one computer, or I mean one uh, station, pair programming station. So we have two monitors, uh, two pairs of uh, keyboards and mouses. And we're gonna look at the same picture at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna... <laughs> The idea is that uh, by sharing the computer and uh, sharing uh, the code, uh, it's being constantly reviewed. Um, the code review started uh, as an idea that you know, if a developer develops some code, uh, he might be taking some kind of shortcuts, or he might be being lazy, or he or might just make mistakes. Yeah, the bugs bugs were like really hard to get rid of when the when the projects got uh, large. Yeah, exactly, bigger projects. So thus, uh, a code review was uh, implemented. The idea was that whenever some developer developed a piece of code, another developer had to take a look at it and say that, yes, I approve of this code. Give a seal of approval. And uh, so basically, people started to do this once a month, and they already 
was like, this is awesome. Yeah, Let's they, do already, it more often they already saw the benefits of this. Yeah, so they started to do it once a week and then once a day and mm -hmm. then once per session. And then the most extreme version of this is let's do it all the time. So basically, all the time there are two pairs of eyes looking at the yeah. code. So all the mistakes should be, not, not all the mistakes, mm -hmm. but most of the mistakes should be already uh, elim eliminated. It. Eliminated it <laughs> uh, as we implement this. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Program. Also, pair programming uh, gives such benefits as uh, whenever you encounter a hard problem that you're really having difficulty to solve, when it's really difficult to solve, then you have uh, two brains working on it. Two people will analyze it, two people suggesting different solutions for it, and afterwards, uh, two people are implementing it. So, a lot of you know, a lot of mistakes can be avoided. Yeah, that's uh, that's one part of it. The other part is uh, when you have to uh, explain your idea to another developer mm -hmm. or another human or even mm -hmm. an inanimate inanimate <laughs> object, then you can then you have to understand what you are thinking, mm -hmm. and that's a really hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah, precisely. If, were, if you manage to uh, put together the question, then you probably already understand the problem. So. Those are the benefits of pair programming, and that's what we're going to do here. And we're actually taking to the taking this idea to extremes by streaming this. So instead of just having uh, four eyes that look at the code, uh, we now have n number of uh, people who can uh, review it live and tell how much uh, we suck. <laughs> yeah, and we want you to tell us how much we suck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alrighty. So I guess that's uh, very much the introduction to uh, kind of the Pair setup. programming and yeah. setup, uh, what yeah. we're going to use. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I guess we can call the introduction at the moment, okay? Right? Can, yes. we, com can we complete our first task? Okay! Ding! <laughs> Achievement! <laughs> so, we can move on to the environment setup. Uh, we're we're going to start in... Uh, just We're going to start this development in Java. Uh, the Java role in this project is going to be the web server role. The idea is that this will be the web server that will host our files and make them available uh, for whoever wants to interact with our game. Yeah, and for that reason, out of the many, many frameworks that are out there on Java, we have chosen a Play framework. Play framework, as the name suggests, is uh, really easy to get started. Uh, it gets started with. It, it has many things in it that uh, other frameworks are lacking, for example, uh, server and, and uh, uh, yeah, the server is basically the main thing. And we're going to cover those as we move on. But uh, for now, we can yeah, we can move on to the development tool. Idea. Uh, Intelli uh, J Idea. Uh, this is a really cool development uh, tool. Uh, we can create <laughs> lots of different kind of project with it. But at the moment, when you usually start a project, you're going to create it with Idea. Uh, but Play offers uh, a much better solution for it. So if you have downloaded Idea, you don't really need to create a project from the Idea. So we're just going to close this. And does this have to be here? What is this? How did it come here? <laughs> Get lost. <laughs> be gone with you. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. All right. So basically, let's say that. No, where is this? All right. This was a browser. So, if you want to start with the Play Framework, you can just go and Google Play Framework and go to the website, and you can just download it. Um, I'm not going to show the downloading process, it's damn easy. <laughs> we have already downloaded it and placed the zip file here. So, we can just get started with that. So, let's unzip our Play Framework, extract to, uh, the good old <laughs> winner are always showing us pop-ups with please give us money. We have used it so many times, but we never donate anything. Because we're cheap Eastern Europeans. That's what we are. Anyway, um, I want to extract the play framework uh, to one of my drives. Let's say... Written. Right. I want to extract it there. Yes, yeah, sure, go. <sighs> Look at it go. I guess it's uh, it's gonna take a while. Actually, no, it's just speeding up. Oh, no, it's already done. Cool. And we can go and uh, test out if it works. 
by trying it out from the command line. So in Windows you need to run the cmd.exe and uh, thus you're on the command line. Now what drive was that? Was it on F drive? Um, right. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. it's F drive. Uh -huh. Right, and I think it was, uh, yeah, there's play. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so now we're in this uh, play directory. Mm, check it out. Yeah, Alright, and if we run play, just type in play, it should download all the dependencies and display that hey, you have play. That is really cool. Uh, what happened here was if we look at the directory from our explorer. It was on this drive. Uh, it was under play, and we basically, by typing play uh, in this command line, we ran this uh, script file here that initialized this uh, project play. And now, if we want to run play in other directories, that means in our own project directory. For example, we have made this. Oh, we have this awesome project point folder, and we have here our new uh, uh, folder for this new project, the, the climber and we run, want to run this play in this folder and we need to have this uh, play command available in whatever folder we are at in the command line. For example, if I change the directory and go, to it, go back to the uh, folder and try to run play here, nothing happens. So let's uh, add this uh, directory to our path. So to do this we have to open our... How do you do that? That was pure magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you shortcuts are really awesome thing to uh -huh. do, and then when you're all all the time using the computer, yes, the computer. That's awesome. <laughs> so then you should know how to use them. So this one was uh, Windows button and pause. Mm -hmm. Windows button and pause opens up this uh, uh, system view here. So another really useful one is uh, Windows button E, which for which is for the Explorer. Mm, that's cool. That's cool. Right. So we want to add a path. We went to the advanced settings, and uh, I think it was remote. No, I think it was under this oh, advanced. Yeah. And over here we have environmental variables. Now this seems like a bit of hacking, but I promise you this is this is the only difficult part in this whole thing. We need to add the <laughs> this hacking, right? Awesome. Let's hack away. Hacking. Right, so what we're going to do is, we're going to go to play, remember this was the file that we wanted to have access to, so we're just going to take this uh, uh, folder, f play, and we're going to add it to our path, let's find it. path here, edit, uh, there are tons of different variables here as you can see, uh, for example for Java there's uh, Java directory here, and we just want, want to add our own di play directory here, uh, at the end. So, so we'll basically everything is uh, separated by a semicolon and uh -huh. we just want to add the directory yeah. of, of the position of the file or the yeah. location of the file. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So we add this, we press OK, OK. Now you need to close the command line and you need to open it up again. And now when we're in a totally different folder that doesn't have access to play, we type play and voila, we have play. So we have added this command to our command line and we, we can use it anywhere. Now, let's go to our project folder. Plus, yeah, programming archon and project. Yes. Yeah. For whoever, uh, for if you have never used uh, the command line before, uh, CD uh, stands for change directory. So whenever you write CD and you uh, want to go to another folder, for example, we're currently in uh, F programming archon projects. I want to change the folder to um, we had play climber. Yeah, play climber. Let's see if it was there. We were projects, and we have this play climber. So if you want to go to that folder, you know, type change directory and play climber. Uh, but in same uh, same CMD, you can just use the tab uh, button to auto complete. The... Yeah. So you don't really have to type out the folders. You just can go cycle through them with tab. Right, so now that we're in this play climber folder, uh, we're going to use this new command to create our project. For that, uh, you just type play, uh, new, and uh, let's call this climber. 
So you just uh, give these commands in and the Play uh, framework will build the project for you. It will start asking you questions. What is the application name? And after the question, you can see this uh, climber that I wrote in first is offered as a default, uh, default uh, option. So you can just press enter. Awesome. Press enter. Now it asks you a question. Would you like to create it as a Scala project or a Java project? Uh, we're currently going to go with Java. Uh, for those who are interested, Scala is uh, it's something really interesting and cool. Uh, totally should try it out in the future, but right now I think Java is more easier for us to follow. Cool. So we're going to go with Java number two. Enter. Aha, uh -huh. the application has been created. So let's go check it out. It created a new folder, Climber, and in the uh, folder we have uh, all this project the stuff that we're going to all cover in a few moments. Now, to make this uh, project easier for us to use, remember, we like the IntelliJ, uh, IntelliJ's IDEA uh, developing tool. Uh, we're going to make this project into an IDEA project. So, we're going to go into that project folder, change directory, uh, climber, and we're going to say play. Make this an IDEA project. There. Play IDEA. Go. Now it's gonna go get its dependencies, it's gonna download more files, it's gonna build more uh, configuration stuff. So all, all of the stuff you don't really have to know about. So basically, Play Framework uh, does a lot of uh, hard work for you. Yeah. Um, if, uh, it, if we would have used uh, another framework, uh, framework, we would have needed to do all these things uh, ourselves. Yeah, basically. manually. We yeah. would have had to go um, look up a tutorial from the internet. Right, uh, it says go download that file. You download that file. You put it in the project folder. You can try it out. You see, this file is old. It won't work anymore with the new uh, versions of Java or whatever. And and there will be a lot of messing around with this. So basically, what this does is uh, take the human factor or human error factor away yeah. from uh, most of the simple tasks. Yeah. That's so basically, exactly. you. If you automate everything uh, as Play does, mm -hmm. then there's uh, less likely that there will be mistakes. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Alrighty, so now that we have uh, created uh, the IDEA project, uh, the Play framework automatically has generated uh, some extra folders for this. Let's create the uh, IDEA modules. And now we can take our IDEA. This was what we downloaded before. This is also for free. Um, you can just go. Uh, Google, type in IDEA, uh, and let's say IntelliJ is the company that develops them. So you can, oh, actually, JetBrains is the company, sorry. And from this site, you can get, just go download, and it should offer you two versions uh, there's the trial version, and there's the community free edition. We're currently building this on community free edition, so you can just uh, go with that. So everything. Again, it's free that we're free. using. And no uh, barriers, no excuses. Start developing. <laughs> yes. Some background music. Ah, oh, good old Bastion. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty, so we're one step closer. Uh, let's just open this creative project. It was under uh, uh, Programming Archon, Projects, Play Climber, and you can see the IDEA already recognizes this folder. Think, hey, I know what's going on in there. <laughs> Puts it on an icon there. And we say, okay. It is uh, running. It's scanning the files. Get a mouse. I'm not sure. Allow access. No more tips. And close. There's a lot of pop ups coming here. Uh, this is a purely Git uh, related uh, message. I'm just gonna go and accept it. Uh, relating to Git, we're probably gonna cover it in some kind of future session. Right now, we don't really want to get much into it. Um, you don't really need Git to build software. It's something that will, it will make it easier in the long run, but right now, we just want to get some kind of working example going. Yes. Cool. So, as you open the IDEA project, you have this project button here on the left side. Click, and uh, you can see your project structure. Uh, all of those uh, folders that you saw in Explorer are visible here as well. Now, we don't really need to go and change anything. 
you can immediately try out this uh, testing uh, uh, web application by just running it. Now, to run it, again from the command line, you're in the project folder, you can give out the command, play, and guess what, I want to run it. <laughs> <laughs> so play, run, and go. It will again go and see if it has to download any more dependencies. Uh, ah, we will allow it to download dependencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says uh, it has started the server. And control V is used to terminate uh, and, and stop the server from running. The server by default is running on your uh, localhost 9000 port. So if you open up your browser now and you write in localhost, this is, uh, by the way, localhost stands for your own computer. Whenever you write that in, all the requests are sent to your own computer. And as it said on the command line that the server is running on port 9000, we go there, and you can see on the background it received the request, so it's got a little ma more magic in the background. Oh man, seems we have run into a small error. We don't have Java available at our command line. Command line. Uh, let's test this out. Set We run Java. Set. Yep. The Java command is not available on the command line. So, for that reason, reason, let's first find out where is Java on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh huh. That's uh, program program files. Let's see if we have it somewhere. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's a Java. Let's say. Let's what say there. Runtime run environment. Uh, we need a JDK. Yes. So, so let's go download. We're gonna download the uh, Java JDK. Uh, JDK stands for Java Java Development. Okay. Yes, that. Uh, so you see Java JDK on here. Download offers a lot of a lot of different solutions. Which one are we? Or 64. Uh, 64. 64. Sorry, you must accept. Okay, we nice. accept. And Oracle can sure build them websites. <laughs> <laughs> At least we are getting what we came here for. Yeah, cool. At least doesn't ask us to like, you know, log in. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we can now we we have to set up the path again. Mm -hmm. As we did at the beginning, mm -hmm. so okay. that the uh, Java C command is uh, mm -hmm. available, vis visible in every yeah. directory, basically. So, for those who are having a question, what is Java C command? Java C command stands for Java compile. The idea is it takes your source file, and if you run Java C on that source file, it will make uh, a binary file, of it, something that can be executed by the uh, computer. So in the background, what happened right now, why that error was uh, thrown, thrown at us, was that the Play framework uh, took the source files of the project and tried to compile them to put together this website for us. And it failed because it found out that, hey, there's no Java C in this project. I can't compile anything. But it, I think it's okay that, uh, I mean, it's actually kind of cool that we run into these errors. Uh, I believe a lot of people that are starting to develop, they're going to run into these errors. So it's great that we cover them. Yeah, yeah. So usually it's in the bin C. file and uh, it's Java C exa. So basically, this is the file that we need. So, so we, we can do. just add the bin directory yeah. again to our system variables. And then settings, environmental variables, and now from the system variables, we're going to go find path. Path, path contains all those uh, paths that are available on our command lines. Just run it. Yeah, we just added our flavor. Yeah, flavor. Flavor plus one. Add Java development kit as well. Yeah. So cool. okay, and okay, and okay. And now we need to reopen our command lines so that they would uh, <laughs> reload yeah. the commands. Yeah, and we can close this as well. And yes, we can. I think we can just uh, open up. So basically, you can open up uh, consoles like from the project itself. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're in the project and you go... Um, it was here somewhere. Honest, <laughs> honestly, honestly. I uh, can't remember. 
Yeah, okay. Mm, somewhere around here should be, but... Okay. A friend in our stream is asking about we at Sander's place. Yes, this is Sander's humble apartment, room. And um, we're currently having our program session. So let's do it manually. Alright, cool. Mm -hmm. Let's change the... Oh! Wow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically we wanted to run. Yep, they run. Do it. Uh, I think we have to change it to climber directly. Oh yeah, yeah. Climber and play and run. Mm -hmm. So basically it runs the server again mm -hmm. and we're just gonna try to refresh this page. Yeah. It's going to still starting asking for allow access. Okay, and now it's started. The started and run it. Load. It got the requests. Uh -huh. Now it's gonna start compiling. So it's trying to compile. This is the part where it's in the background somewhere running its Java C. And wow, it uh, compiled and it built us this nice welcoming page. Your application is ready. That's great. Awesome. It also offers, offers a lot of uh, tutorials so that if you really want to get started, you can start uh, by just reading this and going through step by step. Uh, and quite easy. So, now what we're gonna do is let's familiarize ourselves with this project structure and see if we can carry out some easier changes. So, at this point, I can say that our environment setup goal is done. We can put this. Okay! Awesome! <laughs> okay, but before we go forward, let's just recap what we did here. So, yeah, we wanted to develop the game, basically. Yeah. And to do that, we need the environment. Yes, we so, need someone to develop our code. Yes, so basically, we installed IDEA for the awesome development uh, or the mm -hmm. code writing. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something the viewers have, haven't yet seen. We'll get to that soon. You'll see how awesome it is and all of the different uh, uh, solutions it provides. Uh, let's say, yeah, when you compare it to a notepad. <laughs> yes, so basically, everything uh, we're doing here, you can do it in notepads. But it's gonna be yeah, it's hard. Be, it's, it's gonna be yeah. more difficult than that. Yes. So we installed the Play uh, yeah. framework. We configured it and yes. we basically got well, it to run. Yeah. Insta in the process, we installed Java to so, so basically, uh, is this a server then, or what is what what what's what Play actually? Uh -huh. What is Play actually? Um, Play is a, a com combination of a web framework uh, and this awesome command line tool that provides you with uh, a lot of different, uh, uh, let's say, utils or extra tools. Uh, for example, you saw that you can create a project with it easily by just writing a command. You can start a server easily by just writing a command. Oh, um, so, so basically, this server that we started, yeah. we don't need like Tomcat or no, no, we don't need anything extra. It has a built-in uh, HTTP server. So, you, so basically, if you have an access to a Linux ma machine that is open to the web, that means its uh, IP address is open to the web, uh, then you can download the same play. You can put it on the, on the Linux machine and you run the same commands, and you, and you in the result, as your as a result, you already have a web page. Don't need anything else to set it up. So basically, what we've done here is that when we want to make our project or our game available to everybody, uh -huh. uh, in, we're going to use Amazon Cloud. Yeah. Then we can just uh, download Play there yeah. in the command line, and yeah. Yeah. and it puts up a server, yeah. put, puts up a server, and so on. So basically, it's all out of it. Yeah, exactly. Something that you, you know you might spend a whole day working on setting up a server can be just done by a few commands. That's fucking so cool. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Alrighty. So I guess that uh, <laughs> covers the environment setup, and we can move on to our task of Hello World. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, we want to start a small web page that will just display Hello World uh, instead of this. Uh, your application is ready and it's documentation. We just want our own uh, control over this page. We don't want anything that is here uh, as default setting. We want our own. So let's take a look at it, how this project is structured. There are a lot of different folders here, uh, but what you're going to be most interested in is probably the app folder. This is where most of our code relies. And over here we have controllers and views. 
and uh, these are folders named after uh, a concept in uh, web development uh, called the MVC, the Model View Controller. Uh, if you know about that, great. If you don't know about that, we're not going to go into much depth of it. Uh, you're probably going to see the functionality uh, as we start to use it, and at that point you're going to realize it better than we can actually and we can really describe it. So the idea is, under controllers, we have Java code and other views. We have uh, basically HTML code that we're displaying out. And now if we want to change something, for example, on uh, the web browser, let's see, we have this, your application is ready. So I want to display something else instead of, instead of that. Uh, let's see, how, did, how is it done? We have an index page. It says, welcome to play. I wonder where this goes. So, if we look at this HTML here, we see that it's welcome to play. I don't know, I'm just going to say, Hola! And, Hola! <laughs> and see if it turns up somewhere. <laughs> Let's see if we refresh here. Is it really compiling? Like, Yeah, on the background is somewhere compiling it. Okay, that didn't come up anymore. So, let's see if I write here. Hola! How, how would that work? I'm just, I'm just totally curious. I don't remember what this default project was. Ah, Hola! Yeah. Hola! Hola! Hola. <laughs> so, um, what, what I think is the content here is uh, gotten mm. from a Java file. Yeah, so you're, you are correct. You are correct. This content is uh, generated from the Java side. So, let's take a look at this. What do we have here on the Java side? Uh, we have something, an index, we have a render, and it says your application is. Uh, Huh. We have this small idea problem. It says that we don't have an SDK, uh, it's a development kit. Let's just add this uh, JDK that we added. Anyway, this Java that we added to, to our command line, let's add it to the idea as well so that, <laughs> so that we will have some code, code comp complete. Hmm. All right, okay. Okay. Let's see if this makes stuff better. Kind of doesn't understand the renderer. Ah, it's indexing. Okay. Scanning. I guess at the moment it's probably not recognizing the play framework. So uh, we'll get to that later. Let's see. If we try to change stuff here. Let's save it. Testing. And we refresh. So we got testing here. So we can, we can kind of meddle around with it, and we realize that um, the idea is that we have this thing called a controller, where we can say that what do, what we want to display, and we have this kind of views that say how we display it. Uh, let's see. We have this message here. What if we just write it like this? I think this play. Welcome is the one that generates all of this documentation here. So if we remove this uh, welcome here and we just leave the message part. Right, so I just can. Oh wait, I'm just gonna remove this. And let's see if, if this works, I'm, I'm gonna describe it in a bit more detail. Hola, testing. Okay, so let's start from the controller side. Actually, yeah, let's start from the control side. Whenever we go to the local host, right, uh, this controller is started. This means this method here. We can do a lot more code here, uh, but at the moment, let's just uh, review what is here currently. It uh, says that it returns a result, that means the Java code runs and then it returns a result. And the result is okay. We can also say bad request, uh, but let's currently just do this. And we have the okay response that renders an index page, that's the index HTML there, and first put the content to testing. So let's see view that what happens if we give to the index view a string called testing. Uh, the message comes in here as testing, and it is displayed then here as a message. And this one here is main, so this one in turn calls out the main HTML, and uh, all of the content is sent to here. Let's move this whole lot here. Okay, at the moment we have a lot of chat going on, so let's see. <laughs> what are they trying to understand? What distraction? 
boot you close in your motorcycle. <laughs> Alrighty, um, let's see if I remove this uh, uh, contact from the web page correctly. I have testing, okay, boot, application, index. So we can just write HTML here and it will be displayed as our contact. Now, this was a lot of steps forward, so it might be a bit uh, difficult to understand uh, right off the bat, but uh, let's try to make our own next page and see how that will go. Yes, let's do that. Right, so let's say we have um, a game page. That's the page where we want to put our uh, new game up. So if you go to, a, to go to an URL called slash game, then we want to be, uh, let's say we just want to put up there a game. Let's just put our hello world there. Hello that world. is the goal that we're Bingo. working on at yes. the moment. So we want to go to this world and receive a hello world response. Um, for that reason, it says at first, it says no action found. It, uh, it tries to find out where should it uh, send this request. That means uh, what code should it activate when somebody goes and comes from this world. Uh, all that so to say that we want to uh, initiate some kind of Java code for that URL, we have this configuration file, it's under conf, and called roots. It's rather simple. It says that whenever we get a request of get type to game, then you should uh, activate Java code in controllers, that's controllers, application, application, and over here is index. So it goes into the application and it runs this index method. So basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna write another method there that could, that will take care of the response that comes from uh, the slash game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go copy static uh, results and let's name it game. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, not used to idea. Uh -huh. First, it uh, helps to like uh, start and end. Uh, yeah, it starts and so yeah, on. So yeah, on. it yeah. completes your code. So we have to go index. Sure. Mm, okay, what am I referencing from here? Uh, this index is what index? It oh, called, it's uh, the HTML file. Bingo, it's the HTML file. So we can call index.render and now the content that you want to display there. Uh, so basically this is the hello world that we yes. want to print. Yes, we have that. Perp, perp. <laughs> See, that's the point where the pair programming really helps out. So, we have this. Uh, we have our root defined. Let's see, what, what did we say here? Aha, uh -huh. we want to call out game, right? Yes. So we have defined that whenever a browser comes to our website and goes to the world slash game, we activate this game uh, method and it should print out a hello world. So let's go and try it out. When before, when last time we ran this, we got this error that application found. Now we run it. Hopefully we will get a hello world. And let's see. In the background it's compiling and it worked. Glorious. Awesome. Have hello world. So with this we can call our hello world looks okay yes hello world in play framework it's okay we completed that task ding <laughs> <laughs> achievement all right i just want to uh, brilliant. brilliant 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 okay so this is the part where we have to make a decision do we no, want? no, we're gonna recap, recap, recap all that's, what that's just better. happened here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's better. That's so recap. basically, we set up our environment and uh, installed our Play uh, framework the last time. Yeah. Now we uh, <coughs> we made our own page, and to there we displayed out hello world. Yeah. How did we do that? How do we accomplish it? We accomplish it by using this Play framework, right? It does a lot of, most of the hard work for us. In the background, what's actually happening is that the browser is sending a HTML request. Uh, the web uh, server is receiving the HTML request. It parses it through. It finds out where should it go, you know, through the truth file. It finds the Java code. It makes sure that it exists. It compiles it. It does a lot of magic in the background. Uh, and it, uh, thus, it's really much easier for us to develop. We don't have to really care about the uh, managing side of the request. 
We just say that we want to display this kind of text and it's displayed. Awesome. Uh, tom, tom, tom. As you were starting to say that now we have to make a decision. Yeah. What's decision, the decision? The decision is about do we want to put this up uh, to the server so that anybody can actually get access to the code? Or do we want to get to the, um, let's say, more difficult examples of the play, play framework? So, okay. Uh, basically, uh, we can just type our options here and ah. we can make our viewers cho choose <laughs> if they want yeah. to see the hello world like yeah. in the internet web page yeah. or so basically the first option is uh de deploying to a server server uh, or wait, wait, wait. we want to first deploy to server uh -huh. or second second more complicated co code yeah Complicated code. Uh, so Mel Gibson offers also to rub uh, Johnson's baby <laughs> on, all over his hands. <laughs> uh, yes. So guys, um, one or two, you guys can pick. Before, no, let's give them some time to think. Yeah, let's them. choose. Pick actually option three or something. Um, um, can we do something else, basically? Well, yeah, uh, that's, what would be the more complicated code? Yeah, what would, we, would be the more complicated code? For so example, we would want to display something uh, of a more complex website that wouldn't just have text on it. Let's say that we would want to have something like uh, menu buttons, right? Uh, and, uh, they don't have to work, we just want to display them out. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also handle how does uh, a play framework handle requests of uh, a form. For example, we put in a login form. How does that work? How does a per person inputting a username and a password uh, actually log in on the process go. Okay. And uh, we can also cover something more uh, database side. Hmm. But I was thinking, uh, can we do something um, more close to gaming? Mm -hmm. So basically, take a dot and where you press the dot appears and everybody mm -hmm. would see the dots that uh, everybody's uh, pressed there. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, any somehow accomplishable? accomplishable? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it can be done. Uh, it will drift away from the play framework, uh, as in uh, the play will <laughs> the play framework will play a less role in that. It will be more of a Java script development. Okay. Uh, HTML5 and Java script development. Okay, so basically we don't want to get uh, into that yet. Um, maybe we do. May maybe okay. we do. Okay. So, um, okay, I'm not really familiar with the play framework, uh -huh. so I'm uh -huh. not uh, really sure how to ask this. But as I understand, the play framework uh, works between the client server, so basically uh, the client, uh -huh. which is uh, HTML, and the browser basically, yeah. and uh, before the server. So this is the play Actually, framework. play is the server. Play is the server, okay. Yeah. So, uh, or, well, yeah, it's the it's software that runs. So, you, it, are you thinking about if, if for a game, right, we need the server side of the code? You think about that, right? For example, we want to implement a game logic that, you know, how many HP uh, the user has, or how many, how much code has. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, that uh, you can you can do that in Play Framework as well. Uh, it wasn't originally intended in the Play Framework, but since it, it's in Java, you can basically do whatever you want. So what I'm thinking is. Uh... If somebody comes to the website, yeah. uh, does everybody see the same content, or can this content be uh, made different by users? Yeah, so it basically, can be, yeah. it can be dynamic. Yes. Yeah, dynamic. That's that's what I'm uh, hoping for or mm -hmm. aiming for here. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be dynamic. Uh, actually, before we make the decision, I'm just gonna show how how you would make it um, dynamic. Let's say. Um, how would we do it? Let's say. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I th think this will go to the ah. more complicated code <laughs> part. Okay. So basically, I'll go just. Uh, or we have one. <laughs> Aeons. Aeons. Uh, we have one vote. <laughs> yes, uh, it says that we should uh, deploy the server. Uh -huh. And I think this is uh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, there's a Java joke here. A, a, a group of computer scientists and majors were listening to a lecture about Java programming at a university. 
uh, after the lecture, one of the men learned that over. Huh? What? After the lecture, one of the men leaned over and grabbed the woman's breast. The woman, woman said to that, Hey, that's private, okay? And the man hesitated for a second, looking confused. He said, But I thought we were in the same class. Because in the same class, private private uh, variables are available. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh yeah, we uh, <laughs> We revealed who's I who was identity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Second identity has been revealed. Get a new superhero dude. <laughs> no, uh yeah, but uh, from this came out that uh, we should uh, try to deploy to web server. So basically if we have this thing covered, we can uh, in the future, when we do the more complicated code, yeah. we, uh, we can make it uh, available for you like in really quick yeah. time. Yeah, like, really quick time. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna, yeah. So we can uh, next up, we have chosen to deploy it to the server. So that's it's more complicated code. I think we, it can stay there. Uh, ah. So basically, ah. we're gonna as a next task. As a yeah. next task. Next task. Yes. Yes. So uh, more complicated code. Deploy to the server will be our next task. And let's remove this from here. And we're going to be working on that. Awesome! So, <clears throat> what do we need to deploy? be visible in the website? Web, web, web. Well, to be, so that your application will be visible, it needs a dedicated server. Um, usually, it's good to have a dedicated server, meaning that it has the same IP address, it doesn't change over time. Your home internet connection usually has a dynamic IP address. Maybe. It depends on your internet yeah, service provider. It totally depends on the provider. Um, so a dynamic IP address means that it might change over time. So if you set up a server and your, peop your people are visiting the server, I mean, you know, customers or, or fans, and then your internet, so, so internet service provider provides you with a new IP address. And then nothing will work. Yeah, then, uh, I, yeah, the browser won't be able to find your server anymore. It's, a, it's basically the thing if you live in a place and you receive mail, if you move, you won't get the mail that was. Yeah, uh, that's, taken a, to that's the a good real life process. example. If you if you move from one house to another and you don't really specify that the mail has to <laughs> end up at the new place, your mail will be going to the old place. So for that, we need this kind of a dedicated server, and uh, for that reason, we're currently going to use the Amazon Cloud. Um, we're just gonna let's just so, show how you can access this console. If you just Google Amazon Cloud, uh, then should offer you this elastic uh, computer cloud that's called EC2. It um, gives you all kinds of description. What you're interested in is in creating a free account. Uh, everybody should be, have an access to, I think, one year of free, free computation power. Not sure what the uh, current terms are. But that means you can create an account. And you can log in. What was the splash screen? Control. Shift free. Free. Right. I'm gonna hide my password so you can can see. In the meanwhile, what we're doing here, we're learning to be a better programmers. Be better. Yes. And hopefully, the impact from our not the impact or the talkos is it feedback feedback from our viewers. Will help, help us. Will help us to be a better programmer. Yeah, will help us to be a better programmer, and hopefully, what we do here will help you to be a better programmer. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I logged on uh, to the Amazon Cloud thingy, and from here, let's see where is manage your account. This is the part where I'm always a bit confuzzled. Cloud computing. Hmm. I think, I think it's the, the yeah management console. Boom. Now this is offers all the different uh, services that are available on Amazon Cloud. You're you're interested in the virtual servers, the EC2. So let's go there, and you can select which one of the uh, servers, I mean data centers, you want to place your virtual <laughs> server in. What are you laughing about? <laughs> These programming <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chat, chat Thank you, Mel Gibson. <laughs> You're one of a kind, bro. One of a kind. So, uh, we can uh, choose which one of the data centers we want to use. Uh, since we're in EU, we're in Eastern Europe. <laughs> Represent, man! So, we're gonna choose the Ireland one. In Ireland, uh, let's see. 
I want to create a new instance. Gives me a list of my instances in Ireland. I have none, so I can launch one. Launch an instance. And from here we can see there's different options. Let's use the classical wizard. This should uh, set us, you know, set up, uh, let's see, which one do we want? I think we want Ubuntu. 12.10 sounds awesome. Uh, what is the star? I have no idea what the star means, but I like it. <laughs> uh, maybe if you hover, maybe it says something. Uh, free terrain for ah. bike maintenance. Okay, so basically the stars shows that uh, free. this can be used for free to to a certain amount. Basically. Yeah, yeah. That's and it. this I is what we want. Yeah, totally. Now number of instances. I want only one. Uh, Send to micro one? to yes. free free tier. tier. Mm -hmm. Totally free. Mine says EV is optimized. No, I don't want any additional charges. I want this free thing. Uh, launch into uh, EC2 Classic. Um, yeah, really I have no, yeah. yeah, I have no preferences. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Right, continue. Um, for information, if by some happenstance you don't get the free version and they send you some kind of a bill, you can always contact them. Uh, I've had great customer service up to this point. There have been some misunderstandings where I made an instance and closed it and opened up another instance in another data center and they sent me a bill. And after telling them that, hey, um, there's some kind of confusion here, they not only refunded the money, they actually added more money to my account you know, just in case something else was messed up. Here's some extra. So I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I can That's brilliant. Yeah. brilliant customer service. Yeah, they're really good with the customers. So they they really, really awesome service. Here. All right, so let's see instance details. Uh, use default, RAM use default, monitoring, uh, no, don't need no monitoring, user data, mm -hmm. don't need no fucking data, uh, stop, yeah, I think this default settings are pretty cool, root, uh, I think this is configuration yeah sure whatever, so basically we just want the uh, Linux machine working at uh, our place which we can uh, get to from the internet yes from the internet um, add tags to instances to simplify the administration of your okay I'm gonna add tags I'm not sure what they want to keep whatever let's keep on coming aha and now you can uh, generate the key um, this key is needed uh, to log into the server. Um, you can basically uh, you can log in uh, using the web uh, application which Amazon offers. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna use uh, Putty, Putty, I think, mm -hmm. to uh, get to our machine, which mm -hmm. is like in summer in summer Ireland, Ireland, somewhere Ireland, or something. So we're in the cloud. We're gonna cover the Putty in a matter of minutes as soon as we get this set up. Um, yeah, so basically for that we need the key yeah. uh, to use in use it in our putty program. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, enter a name for it. Okay. Uh, uh, this can be for this project. I think. Or, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, no, it can be R. No, no so yeah, yeah, it's the Amazon pro cloud. programming Arcon would be best, I think. Well, or let's call it Arcon Cloud. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Archon Cloud. Yeah. Create and download your key. Archon, you, you misspelled it. I did. <laughs> Nine! <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> Just smile and wave. Nobody smile and wave. Will, nobody will see it. <laughs> Actually, can we go back and. No, just smile and wave. <laughs> I think we'll just rename it's it good. anyway. Don't worry that much. Yeah. Just put it on a project. Climber. I don't want to share it in Git. Um, yeah, projects. It's sure. it's our developing awesome. Let's okay, see the pools. Hmm. Launch. Sure. Continue. Launch. Working. Your new instance is launching. Cool. 
we don't want to set any kind of alarms or anything at the moment. There's a lot of different tools in this uh, uh, Amazon Cloud console that you can put, uh, put on to monitor your servers. For example, if they kind of crash or something, then you get a notification. Of, to or, instantly know what's uh, happening to your web server. Yeah, yeah. Right now, as you're creating instance, uh, you're going to see that it's booting, you're going to see all the details about it, type and, and, and status. Wow. Alrighty, I think it's running. So let's see if we can get some data about it. If I remember correctly, we need to sign with an IP address. No? Yeah, we need an um, elastic IP address, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think you can see it here. Let's, yeah, see, let's, let's see if we have any. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's allocate me a new, new IP address. Are you sure you want to allocate me up? Yes. Uh, elastic IP address will be used in... Yeah, I want to use it in my EC2. Yes, allocate. And now I have an IP address. Of all the IP addresses on the web, this one is mine. There are many like it. This one is mine. So, and now if we go back to instances, I think I can somehow assign that IP address to this particular instance. Can we just go up? Mm. I'm not sure if it is here. Maybe it's the rest of the IPs and. Aha, uh -huh, sorry, associate. You can see it. Associate. associate. And select an instance. instance, yes. No, you need to select it. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Associate. Awesome, okay, now we have the... Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened here? So basically, in Amazon Cloud, mm -hmm. we made a virtual server. So basically, yeah. we have this our machine mm -hmm. that uh, runs our code. Yeah, somewhere and in the cloud. You, yes, and the Elastic IP is the... The, the machine is somewhere in Amazon, we don't know where it is. Yeah. So basically the IP uh, was a chance for us to get into the Amazon. And this mm. uh, association is uh, connecting the IP to the Com virtual machi yeah. machine that we are having. So if we send request to that uh, IP address, the Amazon will get that IP address. And uh, redirect, redirect, yeah. redirect it to our machine. Yeah, it will just redirect it to our machine. So we should now uh, try to test it out. Let's see if we take this. Uh, it also provides a uh, URL, so you don't have to remember the IP address. Let's see if this works. What happens if we put this in? I'm assuming nothing will happen. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have a server running there. Yeah, there's nothing. It's a machine, yet. but it it has nothing. So we have to configure the pay uh, framework there as well. Yeah. Let's want to test some more. <laughs> Yes, testing, testing, because you see, this is a namespace, right? And it might not be resolved in the service on you, but IP address will be resolved immediately. But I think this one will also just display that there's nothing available there. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this, this, <laughs> yeah, this, this <laughs> I, I mean, this, <laughs> this name is much more easier to, to learn. Yes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it, it has words in it. It's easy, easier. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see if we can log into that. Uh, so basically, it's uh, we have two choices now. Uh, if we can, we can connect it uh, through mm -hmm. the Amazon thing, or do we want to use uh, Putty mm -hmm. to let's connect to it? Let's try both. Yeah. Uh, sure, you've done this before. <laughs> I think so. I'm, okay, let's so see what happens. You see logs here, right? Press the wrong uh -huh. button. Uh -huh. So connect. Uh -huh. mm. Ah, you need to provide it the uh, path to a key. Uh -huh. Can you? Yes. Uh, where was it? Someone. Mm, project. Project. So this. Mm -hmm. Oh, come. On. <laughs> 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 I should learn how to type. <laughs> That's good. Archon. Yeah, archon key. Then what's it? Archon cloud actually. Yeah. Archon cloud. Uh -huh. And let's see if we can launch, launch the account. Okay, run. we need Java for this and we will run Java for this. So it should open our uh, uh, yeah. command console concern that we can use to program our stuff. Mm -hmm. Except. 
Mm. Yeah, crickets, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accept, accept, accept. Keynote phones. And oh. we're in. <laughs> Did we get it? It said keynote phones. Yeah, it was, it's probably storing some keys in the memory somewhere. Anyways, as you can see, this is not much, right? We're on the command line. Um, I mean, can we do that again? Um, Ubuntu. So uh, basically, if this is a uh, Ubuntu, a Linux machine, yeah. we're gonna use to put our server running. Yeah, then we're gonna run our server. Um, this was one way of getting to the Ubuntu machine that you set up in the cloud. Let's try Putty as well. Yeah, I think so. So in case you don't have Java available in your browser and you can't really use this, or you don't really want to, because this can be buggy. Yeah, this this uh, console here. The Java one can crash. So we can just type here log out. It disconnected. Cool. We can close that. Close. So you can do the same process using a dedicated software. Um, in Windows, that's Putty. Putty Exa, you can download it, it's free. Uh, in Linux, you don't really have to download anything, it's built into Linux uh, machines. But the idea is that you run it. Uh, you remember the no, that wasn't that. We want the IP address of it. Let's get the IP address. Host name or IP address. And let's remove this. this. Port 22 is the default SSH port. This is what we're doing. We're doing an SSH connection. We're gonna store it as Archon Cloud, right? Yeah, we want to. Uh... This is basically what you're just going to say the connection as in your putty. So, uh, next time we don't have to provide it with an IP address or the key file or so on. So, yeah. basically, we're just going to save it and... Uh, we're going to go under connection, uh, you have SSH, and from here you have authentication. And here you can provide the key. If you remember correctly, we stored the key in our project folder. Climber... Oh, wait, 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 wait. went too far there. It's a project it should be here, right? Yeah, but oh. it wants a uh, booty ah. private key. Yeah, we need to convert the key. <laughs> okay. Um, How do we do that? Mel Gibson asks if I'm gonna be out drinking today, tonight. Um, not sure yet. Uh, <laughs> I think. Yeah, we're not sure. <laughs> we're thinking about think drinking. Yeah, but first we need to think about programming. Yes. So for we have this uh, pem key here, and this is what we got from Amazon. We downloaded it. But to make it accessible for Putty, we need to change it. For that reason, we have uh, this software is also free for use. It's the Putty Gen tool. It's used for generating keys, keys, and you can load in your uh, SSH keys. For example, if we go programming. Or no, it, yeah, it's projects. The timer it should be here somewhere. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you need to change it to all files. Let's see if we can open spam. Aha. Uh -huh. It successfully opened it, okay, and uh, now we need to save it as a private key. And uh, we're not gonna put any kind of passphrase on it. No. And we're gonna save it as... Private cloud. That's it, save like that. Save! So now we, we got the Putty file now, which we can provide to Putty to get into our yeah cloud. yeah so if you remember uh, we were making a new connect connection here to our cloud so you can go under ssh auth and you can provide the key now so that was programming archon projects archon private key open and we have the key here session let's save let's it save this. and let's see if we can open it up it asks to you uh Trust the server that you're gonna connect to. Yes. Oh man. Let's see. Ubuntu. And you logged in as Ubuntu. Uh, you need to remember the default username in those uh, instances that are in the cloud is Ubuntu. If you run the Ubuntu instance. So basically, now we covered the two ways to get to our instance, mm -hmm. to our into our machine. That's like in the web somewhere. We yeah. don't know where this machine yeah. is. So basically, we need to configure play here, and we have to give it. Uh, can we do it through Git? 
GitHub. Yes, that was actually my idea that uh, if we get a place server running here, then what we're going to do is uh, our code, we're just going to commit it to the kit. That means it's uploaded our kit server. And this uh, Ubuntu instance that's running in the cloud, it will just retrieve the code from the kit automatically. Okay, so basically we can do it uh, just by uh, building our code, mm -hmm. uh, putting into the server like manually, yeah. and then running it. Yeah, it, it can be possibly, 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 <laughs> we can possibly do that, but uh, it's much more faster to use Git for it. Mm -hmm. So it's another reason why why Git is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right, so we're uh, deploy. Um, I don't, don't, don't. I want to try. I want to try if we can just run play on this thing. I'm thinking that maybe ah. this one task, deploy to server, is a bit too. Yeah, a too, bit too broad. broad. Maybe we can uh, yeah. fix uh, it down to small parts pieces. of it. Small pieces. So basically, we have to have a machine somewhere. Yeah. So, the, uh, deploy to server, I think it can. Be like here, uh -huh. and I mean, great sub tasks. You mean. Yes, let's go like uh, set up server. Wait, get server or okay. set up server, uh, which we have already done. Mm -hmm. Second task would be install our frameworks there. Yes. Basically, I think it kind of, yeah, it, that depends on what you call setting, setting up a server that kind of uh, falls under that as well, if you want to set up uh, a place okay, server. True, then. yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically, we're doing setup server at the moment, yeah, what would setting, be yeah. the next task then? Um, connecting our code there. Yeah, deploying our code. Yes. Deploying, I just say code. So this is our next task. So mm -hmm. we haven't finished our first task yet. Yeah. So basically, we got a machine. So basically, so we, we can put get a machine like uh, into the first purpose the Amazon part. Yeah. Um, so now we want to see if we can make this IP address return a uh, result. We already saw this page <laughs> today when we're trying to set it up locally. Remember. The server didn't compile because we didn't add Java. We didn't add Java when we saw this page. Yeah, we saw yeah. an error page. Yeah, and now now we want to do the same thing, but this time uh, we want to do it in a remote machine. So, for that, let's see if we have this thing. Let's see if we have Java, Java here. Java C. If we run that, we already have Java. Oh, wait, no. Oh. <coughs> okay, uh, and uh, Linux is awesome. It already suggests us to sudo opt-get install. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna, let's see, I, what I'm running here is sudo opt-get uh, update. Uh, opt-get is this kind of a cool command on Linux. It, you just say what you want and it will install it. And when you're under Windows, you can usually just go uh, to web, then you browse and you like, go and, oh, I, I, go, I found my VLC here, and we're gonna mm -hmm. go and download the VLC, then I'm gonna install it. Then on Linux, it's pretty cool. You say apt-get VLC and Voila, you have VLC. You don't have to go around scouring the net for it. And at the moment, <laughs> the updates are done. Me. Uh, yeah, that updated uh, uh, repositories. This is the old places that the uh, Ubuntu machine will search for updates. So now we can go sudo apt get java. Let's see what it says. <laughs> get install, install java. Okay, yeah, let's we'll see what happened with that. But okay, we need the version, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Let's see if we can uninstall the OpenJDK. Yes. Uh, that's open JDK 7 JDK. So basically, this should be the same version that you're developing on. Yeah. Because we installed Java 7 to our home machine, then yeah. we're going to use the same here. Yeah, we're going to install it to that Ubuntu machine. It's going to download it, doing all of its magic. I feel like a hacker right now, right? See all the code running by. Okay, it's installing at the moment. Do you want 
refreshment drink. Yes, let us drink them. I shall bring you drinks. <laughs> awesome. You entertain. Entertainment, sure can do. Depends on what kind of entertainment you guys like. Mel Gibson is still in the stream. Being the <laughs> foxy little fox that he is. Alrighty. So, what I'm hoping for is that I can get this jaw installed. That I can get this play installed just as easy. Actually, we should research that. Play. And. Here you go. Can you get play? Can you get. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna check it out if we can use AppGet to also install Play. Because I'm not 100% sure. Sure, if it's accessible there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess we need to unzip and we need to download it kind of manually. Anyway, these are the commands that we're gonna run after we have installed. Oh, we should run this one too for chat in time. Alright, anyway. Uh, uh, does uh, runtime environment uh, consist of uh, Yacht C as well? Um, I guess it doesn't. So it's better that we get the. JDK as well, just in case. But if this is the uh, tutorial to get how to install K, then it should be okay. I um, think. Yeah, perhaps. We can run this just to be sure. Anyway, after that, using the sudo app get install unzip, and we get the unzip for Linux machine. And and after that, you can use uh, vget that goes to the web and uh, downloads whatever URL you're gonna throw at it. So if I download, if I throw a uh, play 2.0.4 zip file, uh, URL to this uh, command, it will go and download that. And after that, running unzip play what? Then, then you have unzip play, and you should have it on your image. Oh my God! It's doing so many things. Magic. Imagine if you had to do everything by yourself. <laughs> That'd be done by the end of the year, perhaps. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright. Seems like it has finished downloading. And we can try... Uh, I just installed the Scala thing as well. Yes! Download Scala. Even though we're using the Play Framework uh, as a Java project, uh, Scala is still being used inside the playing framework. So you can, uh, you might need that. And trust me, the play framework will let you know if you're missing something. So, yeah, let's see. Let's install our machine, get everything we need. Let's uh, find a better word for that. So I think this is the older version, 2.04. Okay. We're already in 2.1, 1, I think. So, play framework. And that's the download link. So, I can just copy the link address. I can go here. I can go. Yeah. Actually, that's. Uh, oh, sorry. PBD. I'm just thinking about where should we put it. So, it really would be accessible all the time. Let's make a new. Do we need a new tier? We don't really need a new character. Yeah, let's just download it. We get let's download the zip file. You can see it downloading. Uh, oh, yeah. it's megabytes. It's only 30 megabytes per second. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Almost in speed. Yes. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Alrighty. Uh, now we need to go on zip, I think. And. Uh, hackery hack hack. And it's done. Awesome. So now we let's see what else we can do here. Um, 
Hi. Moves play to an operational folder. Just trying to understand what's going on here. I guess it changes the framework to play. And is it basically something that uh, is needed to do uh, with the path in Windows? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Remember, on the Windows we had to put it on accessible. And we had to make the command accessible in the path. This is how it's usually done on Linux. But we can try to see if it, if it just runs by going into that uh, created folder. And again, as we did on Windows, let's just run it by see what happens. Like, Huh. Let's see what, what do we have here. Mm. Okay, we need, we need dot slash. This is used to run commands on the Linux. We write dot slash play. If I do it like that, it see if it's already retrieving something. Okay, now it's getting the dependencies. Uh, and we got it to work. Fucking magic, I tell you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, oh, and guys are asking about the server. Oh, wait, I'm talking about never internet. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, uh, yeah, we no. need to do these as well. Yeah, so that it will be uh, accessible for anywhere on the Linux. So, let's go back. Oh. And we're going to move. MV means moving. We're gonna move the play. Yeah. Now you can Yeah. It moves it under the operations folder. Let's see if it works. All right. Also, awesome. basically we can just uh, copy this. Uh, Actually, yeah. And just need to change the version number. Uh -huh. Now we now what? What, what is it doing? It uh, renames, I think. Ln Ln. Let's see, what does Linux LN need to do? Linux LN. Uh, makes, oh, it makes links. Uh -huh. Aha, it, it makes a link between the files. That's okay, that's cool. So LN as... So does? basically it's the same thing uh, that uh, pulling into the path directory in Windows. Kind of like that, yeah. So, I'm making a link. And we're making another link in the sense as play slash play will be linking to user uh, user uh, uh, USR. So what the I don't know. Okay. So when the first one uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. When well, the first command made it such that the uh, operation system itself uh, had this uh, operation folder play, means that uh, currently a play version is used as this one. And the second command makes it available in our command line, I presume, so that user local bin play, that means when you write the command play, this uh, path is searched for, and then that will direct to opt play play, and that will go to <laughs> That's so it's kind of like a link inside a link inside a link. <laughs> Go dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this magic. And well, now then we should be able to use play everywhere. Yeah, let's see. Currently we're in home Ubuntu folder. There's no play here. Let's see if we run play. Ding! We have play. That is fucking awesome. <laughs> okay, what did we do here? So basically we installed play onto our Ubuntu server. Yes, to our Ubuntu server. And it was done by using opt-get. Uh, we didn't install play using opt-get. We got the Java for the... Oh yeah, and everything uh, that we needed to install it yeah. and unzip it. Or yeah. I mean, get it from the web and yeah. unzip it. Yeah, totally. If you remember installing Java on the Windows, you went to the website, you chose which one, we then press download, then we got that file, we run the installer, and after the words we had to add it to path. So this is, this is all the things that we need to do on the Windows. Um, it's more user-friendly for people who don't really know uh, what's going on, so you can make less errors there. But if you need to do it on a daily basis, 
if you're like a system administrator or something. Then under Linux, that's where it kind of uh, shines through that you can just go apt get Java and boom, it's done. It's installed, you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, yeah, next up, what we did was we uh, downloaded the play to our uh, instance in the cloud and we configured it so that the play command would be accessible uh, anywhere in that instance. And now, next up, what we want to do is we want to get uh, uh, our own developed code. So, basically, before that, uh -huh. we can think this. Yes. Yeah. A task has been completed. Got it. Deploy server. Setup of the server is done. And now we move on to the next step that would be the deploying of the code. Okay. Uh, should we do an example for people that do not have access? To Git or do not use Git, so to see that how they would uh, put it up there. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. It's if, it's a uh, it's a good plan. idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what do the viewers think? I think they I think they need to need to see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, if we show the yeah. long way, then they can appreciate why Git is good. Yeah. In the long run, and yeah. maybe gets them to mm -hmm. use it. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, people are complaining that there's no stream, eh? Should we check it out? Just to be sure. Yeah, okay, let's check it out. If if it's still streaming. Guys, is this a one viewer thing or is everybody not seeing anything? <laughs> <laughs> Making funsies. So this is the one who has much more experience with streaming, since he streams StarCraft and other stuff maybe as well. So I'm just gonna let him handle this technical difficulty here. Okay, uh, it was just Ian's problem then. Ah, sucks to be him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna put the uh, videos up uh, later as well, so yeah. you can, if you missed something or want to do the exact same thing that we're doing here, so it's it's a. Uh, it should be available on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna uh, link it uh, later and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just trying to remember what was the software that you know in the Animation project we used to upload files to, to, to instance. Kind of like an FTP. Oh yeah, it was a soft uh, Win SFP thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw, saw it Win SFP, yeah. This is also a freeware program, you can download it. And over here, just like in Putty, you need to configure that connection. Right? So basically, this is a program which is used to uh, basically get files to the machine that you want. Yeah, using the SSH connection. Yes. Yes. So we take the IP address that we had there. We're gonna put it as a host name. Let's remove this and let's remove that. Oh, one moment. I think the music starts. Oh no! Let us resume. Can okay. we develop, develop without music? Oh. It's yes. So we're putting the IP address of our. That's our IP address. That's so cool. <laughs> Username. Uh, that was Ubuntu. And the key file, let's go find the key file. Oh, it was computer, it was F drive, it was our project folder and our private cloud key. We open that. And do we save it? Yeah, we should save it. Save it as our cloud. Yes, let's do it. Awesome. So now we can always okay. log in. Do we trust it? Yes, we trust it. We trust it. Trust everything! <laughs> <laughs> the best way to get hacked. <laughs> so now we're basically in the same folder. So if you're uh, in the command line, you uh, type ls, that will re uh, list uh, all the files that are in this directory. You see this place it. Uh, same thing you can see here. You have this place it here. So we're basically in the same directory. Uh, now, let's say we want to upload our project to here. So you can just uh, on this left side, you have your own uh, own computer drive, 
and on this right side you have the one on the cloud. So you can just go and browse and find find your project. We had this play climber project, right? And we had this climber app here. So we can just take this climber app and drag and drop it here. Just like that. So basically everything that play made uh, in our Windows machine uh, is getting copied to the Linux machine. Yeah. And we should be able to use play run command to set up the server in Linux. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just thinking about that. Um, there might be some extra files that you don't always have to copy over. I'm seeing that it's transferring a lot of... Oh. Okay. Uh, do we need the IntelliJ IDEA uh, files? Yeah, what are the large files? Just thinking about that. Oh, wait. Uh, no, it's still taking a lot of time. Hmm. But it's speeding up. It, it's not that. What's the size? Yeah, that's for project. Let's go find out what's the size of the project file. Dun, dun, dun. So this would be one of those things that uh, Git uh, takes care of. So it's it, six megabytes. It's uh, not that. It's bad. not that. Let's let it come. So basically, at the moment, we're getting our files from our Windows machine to our Linux machine. Yeah, it's uh, uploading them to the cloud. That's our project that's going up. Um, the way the Git helps here is the uh, deal that in Git, you define uh, which are the source files and which of those generate the files that don't really need to upload. And then in that sense, if this whole process that we have going right here, if this would have been done, would have been done with Git, then... Uh, the first download would be still load, but the next ones Hmm. Work really fast because the main files are not uh, changed. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, the first one will be happy and it will download a bit of project it's the same, as well. The same uh, one as this one, oh, or even bigger because. Yeah, uh, actually, I think it's less because you know Git ignores some of this uh, configuration files. You don't really need them. But yeah, but if it's like uh, a project that's been worked for like six months. Uh -huh. Then all the history, the files yeah. that are not even the project, not in the project yeah. at the moment, yeah. are downloaded because yeah. it, it was one in, in one commit. Or yeah. something. But then again, you know, Git is excellent at compressing data. Yeah, true. That. But we are working again on the game. <laughs> game game has a lot of me media files, binary files that Git is not that good with. Yeah. So anyway, a lot of discussion here uh, on whether whether or not to use Git. Um, the bottom line with Git is Git is great for uh, source files, that means code source, but it's not really that awesome if you're using binary Picture files. files or, or music files or yeah, video. video. Yeah, uh, Git will have some a bit of trouble. It will manage, but it will just be slower. Okay. So, now it's we have done, and our climber is yeah. there. So let's uh, go to the directory, change directory, climber, and let's see if we use play and run here. What will happen? Getting fingers crossed here. <laughs> so it's the same command that you run on your local machine, play run. And when before we had this uh, IP address that turn, returned that this web page is not available, there's nothing there. So we're holding our, fin our fingers crossed to get the uh, hello world yeah. there. Yeah. And it should it should be the um, game, right? Yeah. Because the game uh, mm -hmm. subfolder or game request mm -hmm. goes to the hello world. Mm -hmm. oh, it's downloading something. It's interesting. Not sure what's going on there. Or if it should take that long. <sighs> okay, it's going on. Yeah. And now it's loading project definitions. The idea, uh, the reason why it might be slow is because. It's a rather small instance there. I don't remember if it had. It didn't even have a gigabyte of RAM, I think. Yeah, I'm not That's sure. Let's see how, again. how big it was. Uh, this is the old one. We have this instance here, right? Let's see if we can find out what are its system stats. How good of a machine is it there? Uh, it's a micro instance. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have to Google the micro. Yeah. Thing, I think. Let's find out what is an Amazon micro instance. T1 micron. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Amazon instance types. Oh, sorry. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, searching. Uh, micro. 
Uh -huh, okay. So it has 600 uh, megabytes of memory. Uh, and there's some kind of uh, up to two compute units. What is a compute unit? Whatever it is, it has two of those. <laughs> so it's awesome. It's better than it's one. Better than one. Yes. <laughs> awesome marketing right there. <laughs> so I think I need to find the first one. So No, I don't need to find the first one. Compute unit. What is a compute unit? Um, Alright, that's cool then. Amazon compute units effective ah I saw here compute unit what is an EC2 computing and why did you introduce it? I think it's this aha uh -huh. alright okay so we're started so our <laughs> moment <laughs> fuck everything <laughs> this does not bode well do we have to yeah. make public the uh, hmm. IP or something? We have this IP, but is it available? Like, I think it's right? available because we use this IP to connect to it through through a SSH, right? I think so. Okay, so and there's a small test that I'd like to run. Yes, run of tests. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's see what's see running here. Alright. Um, we're gonna find out if it's a server, uh, I mean, if it's play framework problem, it doesn't work, or if it's a connection problem. For that, I have this idea that I'm just gonna open up. Oh, are, uh, we're not uh, connecting to the port 9000. That is a problem. <laughs> we should totally connect to the port 9000. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if that's, that's the problem here. Not sure. It should have uh, should have uh, let us know on this uh, command line here. It's compiling or something. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna leave it connecting. What, what, why is is it listening to uh, it's IPv6 it's address? Is it IPv6? Um, I think it might be. Whatever it is, it's running on localhost. Okay, true. What I wanted to try is that uh, we run this. Uh, we connect to the connect to the server with another account. I mean, just another instance, Ubuntu, and let's see if we can connect to this uh, play server from the same machine using the get. That means we're gonna uh, try to download something from one world, and we give it local host. Local host. There's an A missing. Yeah, there it is. Localhost 9000. Let's see, you try to download something from that? It got connected. Aha, uh -huh. you see? Uh, now it's already compiling. Okay, so basically the server is up, but we're not connecting to it. Um, what are the possibilities? Where can this be cut off? Like firewall or something? So we need to check it. Um, let's see. If I think can... it's from Amazon side. I think, it, I think the same. So let's look at this console. Uh, and this IP address is called standard. I think the IP address, we don't, we're not going to do this from the IP address side because the IP address itself works. We can connect through the IP address using footage. True, so basically the IP address does not connect. Hey, it does connect. IP address connects. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh, there's some kind of firewall or something up here. Hmm. Inbound. Aha, look. Uh, what are these ports here? Are these allowed ports or... I think we need to add it here. Source... Yeah, look, here are all the ports that are allowed through. It allows through... Uh, okay, we need to have 9000, port yeah. 9000 yeah. to the list. Alright, so we need to get a custom TCP rule. Yes. Oh man, a lot of rules here. Anyway, uh, we want the TCP rule uh, for a port range of 9000 and uh, 0000 means from any source. I mean, that means whoever in the world tries to connect, they can connect. You can specify a specific source. For example, if you know your own IP address, you can say, only I am allowed to connect through this. Mm, that's cool. 
All right, so we want to add the night prop nine thousand. Uh -huh. Your changes have not been applied yet. Okay. And let's apply changes. Let's you see it? Again. Oh, apply changes. Apply changes. Hmm. Sure, this button doesn't. <laughs> hmm. um, let's see. Do we have to restart it? I'm not sure. I think it should figure it out to itself. Let's try adding it again. 9,000. And a rule. Apply your rule changes. It does nothing. <laughs> That's interesting. What is this? Well, maybe it's oh, okay. Now it now okay. it now it worked. It was some kind of a weird uh, Chrome uh, issue with this uh, website. I had this uh, small downloaded it... file. And... Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, you need to press this button somehow. <laughs> 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 so let's go and try it again. Okay. Hold on, and we have <laughs> a <start up>. <laughs> So <laughs> can anybody from the stream just yeah? Can anybody test this out? We have this awesome link there. So if you guys can press that, see if, um, see if we get one confirmation that it works, then, then so basically you, you can see hello world from it. Then mm. you can go into making the game. Yeah, we can finally get to the game making game. It's been basically two hours. <laughs> <laughs> two hours for like setting Set up, up the server, and we can connect it from everywhere. I think yeah. it's quite good actually. actually yeah, that, that, that actually is something. This yeah. thing, it we works got awesome. That's great. That's good. That's what we were aiming for. Something that works. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, now I want uh, to add something that viewers can do, like uh, uh, something that they can write, mm -hmm. press a button, mm -hmm. and uh, then it will just that they can uh, post their own messages. Generate, generate sort of yeah. to basically a comment site or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And uh, I think that would be then more complicated code. So yeah. deploying code, like the first way, yeah. is done. It is okay. Uh, we're not gonna go through the git yeah. at the moment. Yeah, this was quite smooth, actually. Yeah, we can just uh, use the same min SCP to just drag and drop our files to the server. Yeah, and we can we do can, it this time. Yeah. yeah, I think it's okay. And next time we can cover kit to make it all automatic so that you don't really have to yeah, do any work. Yeah, press one button and then... You can be, you can be the okay. lazy, you can be the lazy programmer. Which is also a better programmer. Yeah. A lazy programmer for smart is always better than a programmer who does everything by hand. Yes. <laughs> so awesome, we have our own server going. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, uh, now what we want to do is basically, uh, we have this... Let's uh, set the... Oh, maybe do we want to recap? Oh yes, we should totally want to recap. What did we do now? <laughs> so uh, basically we got uh, uh, Amazon server, mm -hmm. which is uh, Ubuntu Linux, yeah. and we installed uh, Play Network there. Yeah. Or Play Framework there, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, then we... We actually installed uh, the Play server there. Um, since Play has a framework and server built in, yes, we did also install the framework there. But usually when you're uh, deploying an application, you don't really want to install a framework onto a server. So oh, yeah. On, have the server running there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but at the moment we installed Play on there as well. Yeah. Because the Play is the server basically. Yeah. And how much time would have it have taken if we gone for Tomcat or something? Okay. Well, that's the thing that if we would have used some kind of other web framework that wouldn't have the server part in it, that we wouldn't have had the chance to just type Play Run, right? Then for that we have, would have had to install a server. Uh, that would be that would have been a Tomcat. It's basically a container, and then we would have had to install also an Apache. Apache basically does the routing. So whatever you have here in a roots file, it's a view it from the, yeah. Uh, whatever you have in the roots file uh, defined like this, uh, you may have to uh, also configure in other servers uh, in, in in the server side. So if you would have used Tomcat, would have had to install Tomcat. Then configure this kind of stuff in Apache and then connect them, and then we would finally have the chance to drag and drop our code onto the server. Dun, dun, dun. So basically, this one this made it so much easier. Yeah. Like two hours, and we have this already going. Yeah, instead of like two days or nothing, whatever it might take for the first time. Yeah, so cool. Um, 
So, do we want to get... Maybe we can do a small break? Or how do you feel? Mm, actually, I feel quite okay. All right, Five in pot? Yeah, yeah. We uh-huh. just uh-huh. cut it up. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> now we can start <laughs> using it. <laughs> Trust more codes. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, let's all do that. Okay, let's set up uh, our goals. Alrighty. Uh, so basically, deploy to server mm-hmm. is... Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And now we want to do something interactive, right? Yes, uh, interactive uh, comment yeah. section. Like that. So, there's so many posts about penises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just starting to see that. <laughs> Get the Rusky code ready. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Alrighty, so. Um, what we want to do is we want to define. Actually, let's just use the game one, right? We want to post the comments yeah. on the game. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So, mm, for this, I think we should uh, look at a small tutorial and do it from there side by side. So basically, what we want is uh, the server to remember uh, the post that the player did, mm-hmm. put it into an array, and then uh, another refresh button would then get the array and then display it? Or is it done like that? Um, it could be done like that, but Play Framework makes it really easy to use some databases and also an in-memory database. That okay. means that you don't really have to set up another database on the server. Again, this awesome combination of Play Framework and Play Server, it can have its own database in that same module or in that same package. So, so you don't have to install anything else. Uh, and I think this would, might be a good place to use it. It has been made really easy. So instead of uh, trying to store those comments in some kind of an array, that's already stored in its own database. Okay. So uh, go a uh, step forward uh-huh. to use the database, not the uh, Java in, yeah. it, uh, in, 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 the, in the middle. I mean. Yeah. 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 We're well, just going to take a step forward here and we're going to try to. Um, store them in, in a database. But we'll get to that in a, in a few moments. First of all, let's try to get this working then. If you po- write something in that HTML form, like, hello, my comments, and you press send, then we want to actually uh, receive it here on the, uh, on the Java side. Yeah, that, that's small, small, small steps. Like yes. Small steps. Small steps. Small yes. steps. Small oh. steps. I was <laughs> viewing that this... Oh, cool. Anyway, yeah, this play, fr- play framework website is pretty awesome. We have some nice things. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, we want to get some documentation. And all these things are covered here. You might as well go through the Toast tutorials. They do a much better job of describing <laughs> how to use play. Um, but let's see what's what is right here on this app. Okay, this is the overview of sample applications. And let's see what's on there again. Hello. How to do the routing. This is already probably using something like this. Manipulating response. Can we just Google making forums in Play Framework? Yeah, we can do that. I just remember there was a really easy uh, oh, okay. example here that I want to find. Let's see. If you remember, then it's awesome. Synchronous. How oh, to perform submissions and validation. There we go. Alrighty, for basically. For this reason, we're going to introduce models for our application. If we had controllers and we had our views, we're going to go and create a new uh, package for models. Everybody loves models, right? So <laughs> <that's excellent. laughs> right. So we're going to just make a model for our comment. Uh, we're going to call this a comment class. and. This basically describes what the comment uh, information looks like in Java. Yeah, we can just add it to Git. Uh, we generated some random comments. I'm just going to remove these. And each comment should basically have uh, a string that describes 
uh, what was the content, right? What was the message? So we have a message in the comment, and let's say we, we also have another string that is the uh, username, user name of who posted this message. This is a very, very simple uh, object, and we can basically just use that. Are we gonna use it like this, or are we camel case it? Uh, we can camel case it, but I have. I don't know. Is yeah. it the username uh, something that you write to name? That's a good question. <laughs> How do you write username? <laughs> username. Something that's written like that. So you, if you camel case username, you just write like that, I guess. It's not. I mean, it's like. Uh, isn't it two words? I don't think it's two. Username. It, everywhere is just one word. I believe the internet with more <laughs> words. <laughs> if Google says so, it is. <laughs> Alrighty. So, we have this, uh, let's see, we created a model, they had a user, we have a comment, and what else do they do here? Uh, aha, okay. The define is, okay, 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 sorry. Let's kind of go quickly through mem. Just trying to remember how it was. Okay, let's just try it like that. Uh, let's go our. This was our index page. Let's create a new uh, HTML page for the game. If you remember correctly, right now the game just used the index view that we had. But now we should get a new view where the HTML form uh, relies. Yeah. And go and create a new file and call it the game. Dot uh, Scala.html. Okay, cool. And I'm just gonna copy paste the old source. Use it here. And that's just it like that. And okay, go to yeah, comments. comments. So we have to change it from here. Uh -huh. And we don't refer to the index page, yeah. but the game. game. Page. Page. Yeah. Or game view. Game view. Yes, you are correct. So let's go. What we have currently achieved is that nothing should really change and just uh, change some of, some of the code. But for end user, it should look just the same. So when we go to localhost game, it will recompile it and we should still see hello world. This hola should be comments. Yeah, right? uh -huh. yes. 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 Yeah. Change the comments. Because it defines so in uh, HTML5 here. Awesome, so now we want to have a form. So we can kind of just uh, write it here as form. So we're using basic HTML. Basic HTML, right, you're okay. correct. And let's say user name is input at this type of uh, text, I think. And name is username. That means that the value that's gotten from here will be used as a username. And let's get another one that is a message. And this name will be mess. This is a simple HTML form. I'm just going to make a line break here as well. I actually, I'm just going to show what, what it looks like at the moment. And it's awesome. Okay, line break, yeah. Yeah. There. Just like that. Yay! Okay. And below the forum would be the posted messages. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna do that as well? Mm. Um, yeah, sure, we can make a small example of what it should look like. Div. Um, user. It, it should look like something like this. I'm just gonna make a, an example that's not dynamic. It's a static one. And it says, "Hola." Let me just see if it goes. Second, if this makes it look better. Okay, um, I think the username does not have to be here. Uh -huh. Okay, later we can use it to 
um, use the username and the user input. Yeah, something like that. So this is ba a basic uh, um, view of what we're trying to achieve that you write here. Martin, and ah, oh, and then you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Let's go for the button. Yes, uh, form and that's uh, in. Put uh, type submit message mm -hmm. uh, value. I think it was value. Um, let's say post. 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 post, 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 post. At the moment, the post is not doing anything. Typo. I think we made some typo. I just fix dun, it. Dun, dun. Fix it while, while we went through it. Not sure. Alrighty. Oh wait, yes, this is a typo. <laughs> this way. You are correct, sir. Awesome. So, and now we want to make it uh, dynamic. So basically, if you press the post button, mm -hmm. the message and the username that you hold are saved somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, div here should go through all the messages and show all the mm -hmm. messages that have been uh, Mm -hmm. Posted. Yes. For that reason, uh, let's say that also for a form, uh, you need to define the action. So action means where this uh, information that, in this, uh, that is put into this form is going to be posted at. So action equals, we can say it's the same, uh, game. So let's see. At the moment, I think it does by default anyway. So let's see. Oops. Yeah, the message and the username mm. are posted. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, method. This is the method that we be using. Uh, this is the post method. So now, now we should get the error because uh, we don't have the post mes uh, yeah. method. Exactly. The application gives an error uh, that we don't have a post method for it. So for that reason, let's go to our roots file. This defines that all the URLs that can be used in our web application, and let's define a new one. Do we need a new one? Can we just uh, put it into the... Um... This is the practice that is used on the server, uh, on this framework. Okay. That you define it as... Uh, you have post. So whenever you get a post message at the same world, you do a different thing. Oh! And you okay. make here, let's That's say, awesome. new comment. So you have a new comment, and now we need to define it <coughs> in our controller. Awesome. That's so awesome. we say public static uh, result, and this will be new comment. And uh, if I remember correctly, let's just let's just currently make it return the same uh, same thing it it returned before. Return, and you should uh, as a result you should still end up on the same page. Nothing happens. I just want to make sure that. Uh, uh, the routing works, that this route that we defined here is able to call the new comment and uh, you're gonna s just going to stay on the same page. Let's see. Or reload the same page. Yeah, it will just reload the same page. Now it's currently compiling and you stayed on the same page. That's awesome. So, can we... Um, the static variables that we have here yeah. be the ones that we type here? Yeah, we can do that. So this is a great way to see how does this uh, view uh, and controller interaction work in the game. We have here this message up here that says that uh, this view takes in a parameter message and it uh, tries to display it out somewhere right here. So let's remove this uh, message. We're not going to use it anymore, but we're instead we're going to use uh, user as string, and also we're going to use. Okay, we're still going to use message. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I really didn't think, it, think it through, but. I'm going to say that uh, for this view, you need two elements. You need a user that's a string and a message that's, that's a string. And in here, we can say that uh, instead of writing out the static Martin that, and says hola, you can say at. This means that uh, this is the Scala, way, uh, Scala view way of saying that now I want to use a parameter, user, and says I want it to use a parameter message. As a result, hmm? you have a question? No, I think, was it user or was it username? Oh, username was, you're correct. Username is a uh, more correct term. Now, uh, we can go to our application. 
this renderer will not work. Uh, let's just put here a default default user, let's say, and uh -huh. <laughs> user and the message would be default message, for example. Let's just try try out if this uh, new uh, view works for us. So okay, now whenever we post, doesn't matter what we post, it should uh, always just say default user and uh, default message over here. Hmm. Hmm. Aha, it says that all of these old renderers are broken. That these old renderers don't work anymore. Uh, that's because we changed it, right? So, uh, let's just give here empty strings, like this, and like this. But this can remain like that. So this was the, remember the game page, right? This was the... Uh, we, we changed it, and because uh, we... Uh, change the view. parameters that uh, mm -hmm. this view requires. Yes, the older ones needed to be updated. Yeah, precisely. So now we see that yeah, this one gave nothing. But now if we give it some kind of content here, post, it says the default message. That this means that this method was invoked. Now what we want to do is that this content action that we write here uh, would end up as, as something that's done here. Yeah. So for that, um, I think it was. Uh, Request. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna look at the tutorial here. How was it done? It was used as a form. Okay. We're gonna define a form that can be used uh, in this controller, and we're gonna say that. Uh, let's see. Uh, which one was it? Which one was it? But uh, we made the comment uh, models. Can we use the comment model here? Yes, that's okay. that's what we're going to try to use. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, for that reason, we need to import the form that will use this comment class. Uh, for that reason, we need to. Uh, if you're just going to copy paste the code here, uh, the Ida won't really know which one of the form classes you want to use. It's going to offer you to two different forms. Now, this is uh, this is a bug where I find. <laughs> that the people who built the play could have uh, done this perhaps a bit better. Uh, there's a chance to make an error here because you might pick the wrong one. So I'm just gonna look at this documentation there here that it's supposed to be play data form. Import play data form. This will be type of comment. It's other models. You can see here comment from our models. That means we're gonna use our own model class that had the message in the username and this will be of uh, command oh, bless. Yes. command class is that it in for alright this is a bit of uh, java magic here but as a result you should have a user form and now you should be able uh, user form what it does is it knows how to bind a HTTP uh, post message. That means what we defined here, username and message. And it's able uh, to bind that data to a Java class, to a Java class. So it knows that, hey, this, this one here has username and message. And the HTML form has a username and message. I should connect them. And that's basically what this uh, user that's form... That's what we're doing here. Yeah, that's it. This will be now a com comment form. And we're going to try to use that on our uh, post message. For that, uh, let's see. How was that done from my. Hmm. I'm trying to remember here. Basically, what we want is we want this new comment. 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 Equals. Uh, So basically, it uh, needs to get from the HTTP post request mm -hmm. and bind uh, username and comment to it, or mm -hmm. username yes. and string to it. That you are correct. Message, I mean. Yeah, you are correct. I'm just trying to remember how it was done. There's no HTML example here of it. And this is the part where I'm just going to go uh, to look at an example. Basically, when you installed a play, you you exp uh, you unzipped the play uh, to your hard drive. It gives you a lot of samples. 
under play folder, you have samples folder, you have on Scala versions, you can go, and we're gonna, I'm gonna to pick a Java version, and I'm just gonna pick a forms example, this seems like what we're doing at the moment, and over here we have the same controllers, models, views, as, as we had we, controllers, models, views, and we can just go there and look, how did they, how did they do that, just kind of put it up in notepad, and as, as I have uh, a form, they also have a form, and let's see, contact form, find from request, okay, that's super so cool, um, I'm gonna implement it now, we had this, it was static, and it was final as well, okay, static, final, comment form, that Find for requests. Hmm. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, okay. I need to do it like form. Uh -huh. So now we have the Java version of that HTML form here. This is the HTML form that was posted. Now it has been translated to a Java class. And from here, we should be able to say filler common form punct get comment. Alright, so uh, if we take this, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we can make it more specific. We can add, add here that this form is supposed to be of common type. That means uh, this form here is a HTML form that should contain a comment. And as a result, we can tell that form that, hey, give us an object that you received from the HTML. And as a result, we finally have this Java object that should have just a message and username. So let's try to use it now. Uh, so basically what we did here is uh, bind the post Mm -hmm. uh, H H HTML post, HTML post, yes, to uh, Java yeah, class, to a specific Java class. Okay. And now, now we can we're gonna use it and mm -hmm. uh, like yeah okay yeah yeah you're correct. This is uh, right. Let's make these fields uh, public. This is something we can uh, later use getters and setters instead to and make these fields private. Kind of a good way of doing stuff on Java. I'm just currently gonna do a lazy example that we're gonna use comment, username, and comment message. Okay, so basically this was the lazy way. The not lazy way would have been uh, where was it? Uh, comment the class. Yeah. And we can think mm, to this thing. Yeah, we can generate uh, getters and setters. So basically, this is the not easy way. This and is, yeah, it's uh, it's the not lazy way. I think actually. this should be correct. Oh yeah, so let's, make them, yeah let's make them private so that you know private parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we had to joke about in the con <laughs> in the stream comments earlier. So basically, now we don't use uh, username, yeah. but we use uh, get username and get message yes that is awesome and now <laughs> if everything goes well it should totally work <laughs> dun, dun, dun. that has been said so many times before so famous last words totally alrighty let's reload compiles test test post test test what is this magic Sorcery, I tell ya! <laughs> it works. That's cool. So, basically, what it achieved is that we post some HTML data, data it gets bind to a Java object, it's uh, validated, and afterwards it's uh, posted back into the HTML form. Okay. Um, I know we before thought that, okay, let's use the database and mm -hmm. do it like that. Uh, would it be simpler than just have a Array here, and every time this thing is gets called, puts the and has a comment, 
puts into this array and mm -hmm. this gives the array uh, of data to the renderer. I myself consider them to be uh, of, of same weight weight uh, in, in the context of uh, difficulty uh, since these are actually static methods. Uh, that means so. uh, there's only one, one of these methods and everybody who uses uh, this web application calls out the same method. So you need to start thinking about thread safety. What if two people go out this method at the same time? Oh, come on, we have eight viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Be a better programming, <laughs> teaching bad practices from day one. <laughs> no, let's not do this. Okay. Uh, uh, we can, we can uh, do an example of that. Uh, how, how to we, make a uh, thread safe. How to yeah, make, a thre make a thread safe and, and try to implement it. So, but uh, uh, we, if it's better to use the other way, then I think well, for the entertainment value, we just should do it the right way. All right. You mean the database way? Or yeah, yeah. The right. database way. All right. Um, so I'm not sure what do the viewers what think. The viewers want. Yeah. We can show bad code at first, <laughs> and then <laughs> fix it to thread yeah. safe code, and then I think then we're already half technically future. <laughs> yeah. <future. laughs> or maybe users actually want to see this uh, made pretty. Maybe, maybe oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> who would want to see that, right? <laughs> we just uh, want a lot of penises here. Yeah. <laughs> sure thing. No, no. I'm not sure if users know what they want. So guys, do you want us to implement the database? Or do you guys want us to implement... You want something? Lazy code. A lazy code. <laughs> So, now it's your turn to entertain. I'm gonna get some drink. Awesome. Thank you. Can you bring me nuts? I bring you nuts. Awesome. <laughs> so. Hello. So basically what we've done is build a game. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm always dreaming of a world full of nuts. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, at the moment, it seems that the viewers don't really know what they want or don't don't have a preference. And then I think it's not a good thing to implement the Java way. It used to play framework for everything. And go for the database. Thing. <sighs> It seems that uh, people are not okay. Yeah, it's good, it's good to get the comments set running, so mm -hmm. I think we can use the database. Oh, yeah. Let's see how do we make a database. So the purpose of the database is to store data. Who the thunk? <laughs> thunk? That's Thought. Right. Nah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, we don't need an um, actual database, we just need uh, a runtime database to mm -hmm. store that data. Mm -hmm. For that reason, Play Framework ha is already coming prepared. As in, you have this uh, underconf file, you have application conf. There's a lot of parameters and other things you can activate. And one of them is an in-memory database. The idea is you just an uncomment two lines. That means uh, database people driver will be a um, hitch. Wrong view. Oh, <laughs> alrighty. So anyway, in the conf application conf, you have this configuration file that has a lot of things you can activate, and one of them is a database configuration. So um, you had. This was the conf file before, and by just uh, uncommenting these two lines, you tell it to 
use an H2 driver that's an in memory database. You don't have to get into details about what it is and what it does. Uh, you just need to know that I am commenting this line, you'll activate it. And you can say that it has a default tool, it means where this uh, database is accessible. And as a result, this uh, Play server will have its own in memory database. Now, next up, you need to define. Mm, where are the objects that you need to store in the database? I'm just gonna see if we can find a guide for that. I think there was something. <laughs> there we go, using ebeans. By adding an extra configuration uh, to the file, uh, ebean, default models, and small uh, star at the end. I just put this in, in here and I'm gonna say what it does. It says that uh, there's a so small software a module here called eBeans, uh, and it has a default root for models uh, package. So it will go into this package and it will search, search for uh, anything it can turn into a database object. Okay. And at the moment, we want these comments to be our database objects. So we're going to define it by writing here at NTT. Entity is uh, uh, something that is in the Java world uh, a standard that is used in Java world to describe that this thing will be an will be an entity type, and this is what this uh, in memory database is going to search for. Actually, this EB module, and if it finds something that has an entity within before the comment, it will try to turn this into a database object. Mm. I'm not sure if I had to do anything else. Let's just see if we take a refresh. And I, want to, I just want to see if it gives me an error or something. Aha! And this is actually a good error. You see, this means that, um, if you read it here, that database default needs an evolution. What it means is uh, the database was started, you know, in the background right now. What Play did, it recompiled the sources. It found out, hey, I have this new configuration in the app configuration. And I have, need to have a database, all right? I'll put up a database. Boom. After that, it found out, hey, I have this new configuration telling me that I should search for entities to add to the database. It went into the models uh, uh, package, found, hey, there's this common thing. I should make this into a database object. And what it uh, says now is the difference between Java string and the da database uh, way to uh, store a string. So basically, yeah. I think the problem is, here is the word or length of 255 uh, characters. See, that's or the, is it? That's the thing. You're thinking there's a problem here. This is not that problem. This is uh, uh, what well, it says that hey, I found that there's something new. It found the comments, okay. and it says that hey, um, I found the comment. I think it should look like uh, uh, a table in a database that has a message and a username. Mm -hmm. Can I create that? I'm saying yeah, sure, create it. Oh really? And boom! Right now in the background we have a, a database that has a comments table with message and string. Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have to really set up a database, you didn't really have to build a database user and a username, you didn't have to provide it to the display framework, you did all of that. You didn't have to go to that uh, web server, I mean that the database server, and say that now you have a comments table with message and username. The plain framework did it all itself. Awesome. So that's all you need to do, just need to say that, hey, I want to have something with message and username. It does it. Fucking magic, I tell you. Now, next up, what we want to do is um, we had this uh, controller this, that made a new comment. We have this comment here, but we would really like to store it. That means we want to store it in the database wherever we get, create the new comment. Uh, let's see if it was here, it was covered here as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to. There was something else that was added here. All right, you need to extend the model. If you take a, if you add something as an entity, you should uh, extend uh, right or wrong extends model, and it has to be play database ev. Uh, that will give a give you a lot of uh, methods that you can use on it, and you should also add uh, this one one extra method that it needs. This is something that's, uh, for some reason, I unable to generate itself. Uh, it's used to find uh, uh, tasks. Okay, uh, I mean comments. 
or in a more general way, it's used to find entities from the database. I'm okay. just going to describe it in a moment. I will just kind of fix all of these errors that it has here, and then I'm going to... So I think that uh, this is needed for finding the yeah. data from the database. You are correct. And so that we could tell the difference between them in the database, we should also add private uh, long ID. Each comment should have an ID. And for the ID, we should also add a getter and a setter, just, you know, to keep it constant. Uh, keep it same way. So, ID has a getter and a setter, and the message has a getter and a setter. And now you need to. So, the ID is automatically used by the database. Yeah. And over here, you need to uh, add. Uh, ID is auto increment. Yeah, or well, I think it actually uh, implements the auto incremental part itself. Okay. Uh, you just need to define that yes, this is the ID. It needs to know which one of these fields will be used to identify the object. Mm. And right now we're using this. Uh, is it correctly written that this is with uh, large uh, yeah. capital and the other one yeah. is not? Yeah. It's the uh, same way in the Oh, okay. Example. ID. Yeah, it doesn't have to be safe. You can say that you can write it in Estonia as well. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you put as a name. Uh, the annotation will take the okay, next the field. Next field yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's just. Yeah, awesome. I'm just gonna see if I'm missing something else. There's a lot of uh, extra constraints and annotations you can add. Uh, for example, if you would have a date field in the comment, for example, uh, date posted, uh, you can add uh, a formatter to that. Uh, the formatter will make sure that this date is of a specific type. But these are all like constraints, and I wouldn't really want to get into those. We just want the most bare bones version that we, we can just running. Yeah. So we have this, um, and now let's see. Here are different examples of uh, how we can get all of these, uh, how we can search them. Uh, for example, you can now just say task find all, and you'll get the list of all the tasks that you have. That's, that's basically the same as you know, you would put them in the list, and it, like you want it in the controller, and you, but now you can just say task find all, and you will go to the database. Okay, and that is the thing we need to run mm -hmm. if we want to show all the comments that has been mm -hmm. done. Precisely. Um, just trying to figure out how the, was the saving done. Mm -hmm. Transactional. Uh, so the, yeah, there was transactional, but I would not want to use a transaction for this. I just want to create a new one. Maybe it has a save there. Let's see from let's see for ourselves. Can I just comment? Can I just say comment from save? I can. That is pretty cool. Let's see. Um, I hope this works. Does uh, it save the database? Or? Yeah, I think it does. It's part of the model of the eBean entity bean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And now, now each each thing that you have defined as an entity that has an extended model should have this method called save. So. And as a result, whenever we call that method uh, in our application, it should save itself to a database. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to add one last thing. Uh, the rend okay. One yeah. Last thing. Yeah. The the list to the renderer, so the renderer would display all. all yeah, the comments. exactly. So we need to get uh, another uh, multi. Yeah. Uh, parameter to this. Yes, exactly. Which is a list of the comments. Precisely. So. Um, Let's say a list, yeah. a list of comment. Uh, import class list. Okay. A bit of uh, Java magic. No, I don't need to define it here. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, sorry. List. We, we can just uh, use the. Um, yeah, actually, we can, we, can, yeah, we can just call it out over there. We don't need to generate it before. Mm -hmm. So we can call uh, comment punct find punct all. So this basically should add, return a list of comments. Yes, all of the comments. Now we need to do the same for our other view. Yeah, remember. basically, if you don't have anything, if you don't. If you have not uh, provided a username or message, mm -hmm. uh, for example, you come to the page for the first time, mm -hmm. you should 
still see all the comments that everybody has, so mm -hmm. that needs to be called there as well. Mm -hmm. And over here we can define that there's one more uh, games at least. Messages. Sorry, sorry, yeah. yeah messages. messages. This is uh, comments and it's a list. List mm -hmm. of comments. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember how, uh, how was it uh, named in Scala comment. I'm not sure if it was like that. Um, hmm. see, HTML templating is the, this is called HTML templating. We're building a template, and HTML will be built from it. So I'm just gonna look at the documentation page and find out how how was it done. The template engine, booyah! So let us see. Uh huh. Uh -huh. There it is. Like that. Mm -hmm. This awesome. all it. cool. And now you can iterate. yeah, we can just go through that. So again, we're gonna call out Scala code in this using at and for. Uh, now there's a bit of uh, something that if you've only done Java, this may seem a bit uh, other way around. So we're gonna say we have comment, and the value for this comment is gonna come from the comment itself. Yeah, it should be called comments. So we're gonna take from comments a comment, and for each one of the comments that we find in the list, I'm just gonna move this in here. Uh, like this. So, we have a list of comments that we get from our Java, Java code, and we're gonna go through this one by one. Each time we're gonna take one comment, and we're gonna write this kind of HTML, where username is comment.username, and the message will be Message, awesome. Right, so I'm feeling brave. I'm just gonna try and run it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where is where the, the first one? The first one. All right. No. Mm. Variable username in class cannot be accessed. Oh, <laughs> that's because yeah. we need to and set this. We need yes. to get methods. We're being good programmers. <laughs> get username and get message. As we made those fields private, they cannot be accessed. Like we remember from Mel Gibson's joke. <laughs> That's why. How we about have... private parts? <laughs> uh, exactly. So let's see if it will work now. Keeping my fingers crossed. And again, uh, now it has found out that hey, there's more stuff that needs to be added to the database. Um, you need to have comment. It needs to have an ID, and it needs to be a primary key. So it, it keeps on generating more and more XML to keep up with our changes. Mm. Awesome. So I'm going to say that, yeah, this is pretty cool. I, cool SQL, bro. <laughs> Use so, it. Let's see. Let's nice. Right. Right, post. You can post the other one. Okay. Max. Hola. Post. And right. let's get this online. That's pretty cool. Let's get it online. So <laughs> as remember, now that we have done all the difficult part, you know, the getting online, getting the stuff online should be quite easy. We should just take the app folder. Yes, app has all the app has all the controllers, models, and views. Those are the basic files that we work with. So basically, oh. we're just going to change them. And yeah, and the conf file. Yeah, yeah conf file is the one has also. Uh, so we're going to take app and conf. Delete it and just rename. We can just like put it like that, right? Copy. Oh, I think Climber, so. Copy. Um. Yes to all. Yes to Remote. All. Yes, success. Yes. All right. Yes to all. Do, 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 do. So, so it has in it. now we don't even have to run it. I think. Yeah, just... it's already running. So we just go here, and it should recompile it. And it should call out about the database changes. Yeah. So and we're gonna go. Yeah. Sure. Allow. That's what should happen, right? <laughs> It's compiling at the moment. Yeah, I suggest. Yeah, I think we can actually check it out. Uh, what's the other one? This. You can see. It. Yeah, it's compiling. So this is the old Putty window where we logged uh, into the Ubuntu uh, instance that we had running in the cloud, and this is the one where we started the uh, Play server with. So whatever happens to the Play server also runs on uh, through this command line thing. So in the meanwhile, um, we can 
fix all of this. So interaction combat section is okay, but oh, I yeah, think that's... we want to uh, maybe say what we did here. Killed. Um, why? Why did it? Why? Why you kill it? <laughs> why would they kill it? That's interesting. Let's see. Let's try to run it again. So it's not responsive, eh? That's interesting. There might be a possibility that uh, the small instance uh, that's up in the cloud is not powerful enough. Aha! Uh -huh. It got killed, but it's gonna try again. It's persistent. <laughs> <laughs> So it's gonna load the project definition again. I'm not sure, I think maybe one of our users just went to the page and started to do it again. I don't think so. Yeah. No? It should, um, it should collect, collect together all the HTTP requests that are sent to it. And in the background it should, it should just try to compile it. And when it's done, it, then it should start serving those. Hmm. Okay. And now we go back to the file. And so we wait. Okay, in the meanwhile, we can just recap what we did. Uh -huh. So we um, made uh, Java HTML uh, posts. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. mapped the input from the post to a Java class. Yes, it's mapping thing. Mm -hmm. And it's the other way around. So we got the data for H from HTML mm -hmm. and we got it into Java that we yeah. can use it from uh, Java then. Yeah. And uh, to display it. Mm -hmm. The other one that we did was implement database. Mm -hmm. And that's basically, yeah, that covers it. That was the two things we just worked on. Yeah, so whenever somebody posts HTML, it will be mapped to a Java class. And thus will be created an instance of that uh, class, an object. And that object will be stored to the database. And afterwards, uh, the page will be rendered again. Hmm. Too bad, I think the server is not powerful enough to, to compile it. Oh, awesome! Okay. Let's uh, allow. Uh, we're using the Play database. That it Actually, has. Uh, Play has a H2 database built in. A H2 database is an in memory database. And why are we using it? Is since it's so easy to play. You just uh, uncomment two lives in the configuration file. I'm just going to show those two lines again. It's in the app application configuration. There's a database section in these comments. These two lines, you uncomment these, this one will create a driver for it, this one will say where the database will run, and thus you have an in-memory database on that play server, and then down here you add this kind of line, even default models, that will go to your models folder, you will find all the objects in the models that have entity uh, and, and the extent model and will try to create a database version of that. And after that when you run your web application, it will automatically generate the tables for the database. Yeah, so you don't really have to set up a database, set up the connection from your application to the database. You don't have to write the SQL for it. Blah, 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 blah. So it works, right? Oh. Did somebody comment to us already? Yeah, so you guys can go to the link that we posted in the chat. And you can try uh, writing some messages there. And you can press F5. Or you know, just refresh the page. And then we should should see your your posts. So to make this uh, real time, we need to use uh, something like Ajax or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah, Ajax will allow us that. that if you post it, it will pop up here without you having to refresh the page. Okay. I'm just gonna see if it works. Test. <coughs> blah 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 blah. Numbers. So test says. Oh my God! People are right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! People are posting. This is awesome. <laughs> um, this, this is this is actually quite an awesome feel. Uh, one thing is you're building an application, but when somebody else starts to use it, that's 
even if it's nothing, you know, nothing like spectacular here. Just knowing that somebody else somewhere in the world just used your application. That's that's, ah. awesome. <laughs> that's really awesome. So cool. So guys, you guys are cool. Yes, um, but I think that we're gonna take a break from here. This mm -hmm. is a good uh, place to make one, yep. uh, get some food and so on. Yep. Uh, but before, do we want to recap everything that we did since the morning? Since the morning, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a big uh, recap. Yeah, a big recap. That'd be great. So, what do we start, start out with? We so basically, we have a big recap over here. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna try to make this uh, dimensional recap. Is ah, it's above our heads, it's somewhere up there. <laughs> what, 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 what? Yeah. You see, if you if you watch on the stream, right, we're we're in this corner, right, as a as a small webcam. Oh, okay. and all the touch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what do we have up there? <laughs> okay, the first one is the stream, stream setup. setup. All right, we did that. I'm not sure if we have to cover much about that. We set up a Twitch account and stuff. It works. That's pretty cool. Then we set up an... Uh, oh wait, then we had an introduction. Saying who we are. Max Insights. Hey. Hello, we're developing software. Very time I love And we're called the Casting Archon. The wait, wait. Programming Archon. Programming Archon. <laughs> Lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then after that, we set up a small environment. Uh, environment for Java development. And... Uh, uh -huh. People are already trying to hack the site by <laughs> putting in uh, scripts that would uh, uh, throw alerts at people. This is a cool way. Uh, much respect for the person who are trying to do this, but I'm afraid that the Play Framework has some kind of uh, uh, stuff already built in, so when I'm doing this uh, form binding, uh, these uh, tags are not really posted back as uh, regular HTML. Uh, they're, 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 these uh, scripts are escaped. So. Good try, awesome. <laughs> Yay. Back to the recap. So we set up an environment and we did a simple hello world. We put up a web page for that. We had to install Play and we had to install a new version of Java in our local machine. We finally got it working, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got our environment running. After mm -hmm. that was uh, the first hello world. So we started using the Play network framework mm -hmm. and just made our first view. Yeah. And then the view was hello world. <laughs> cool. And then after that we started to work towards deploying it to a server. And we got ourselves an Amazon instance. It's probably costing me some money right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be free. Uh, for anybody who hasn't used Amazon, they should provide you with one year of free micro instance. And thus we had our server and we installed Java and play to that server as well. Yes. Using that get and they get and stuff. And after that, we just drag and dropped our project to the instance. Yeah, and run, run play there and we got it running. Yeah. And that was the cool part. We started from scratch, we built an application, and we deployed it to a new server that we started from scratch in basically 2.5 hours. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing, you know. Considering what has to be done usually in Java environments to get stuff running, <laughs> this is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we got after the after that we enhanced our program to yeah. get comments, and we implemented a database. database. Database, yeah. There's a database involved. Yeah, <laughs> and, and now there's a comment site that people can use. Yeah, they're already posting that we, they want to have angry sex with us and, and cocaine. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah, I think this thing is uh, a place to go on Reddit. Yeah, let's post it on Reddit. That's awesome. And then we're gonna take a small break. So, um, oh wait, I see. Are there any comments here? No comments. I just refreshed it. Oh. I hope they liked us. Guys, uh, viewers, everybody who has a Reddit account, go to the learning pro. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna post the link. Guys, just upload that. Yes, that, that's that that's awesome. About, 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 about. Yes, and uh, do we want to post a comment ourselves that uh, we got our first program running? It's on this site and uh, comment. Sure, leave us comments. Sure. We're taking a break and mm -hmm. we're going to continue after. So far, we yeah. this from scratch we mm -hmm. should be there. <laughs> it's 
sorry, wrong way. <laughs> this, no, that's local host. Not working as intended. Mm hmm. <laughs> Alright, alright, what, what, what? Oh, uh, no problem, it's good. We'll, we'll work on that, we'll work on that. <laughs> it's a small bug. It's a bug. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we're skipping right now. For example, how to make this uh, more visually appealing. And, and yeah, that's a big, big thing that we're skipping. We can actually, you know, if, if we were to want, we can show how to make this pretty using bootstrap. That means how to put in a nice framework for the visual side. Okay. That's one of the things we're going to look at, at yeah. after the break. Actually, we don't have a, a set in stone plan what yeah. we're going to do after the break. So if you guys want to want us to do thing X, so just post it and uh, we can do it. Or something simple, make it easy. Was it this one? I think that's how we made it. Thanks. I think so. Uh, and maybe we should just, we're going to continue after uh, and leave us comments if you want mm -hmm. us to implement anything. We'll... Oh. I don't know, 30 minutes or something. What are you guys laughing at? <laughs> I wanted to have an angry sex video twice because of this bug. Alright, <laughs> 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 um, we'll continue in 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, leave comments here for stuff that you might us, might want us to implement. <laughs> What's making impediment? Impediment. What? What? Fox? What? I think this is okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, let's post this. Post it. Post it. Yes. I'll see if the link works. Hit dash. Oh oh oh! It it takes and to post. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does a lot of big bugs. Awesome. Free. We have three uploads. Three. Which one was the? Who downloaded us? That's actually the Reddit feature. Reddit will add some downloads after every couple of uploads or something to mess with bots. The idea is that bots will actually follow uh, the count here, see how many uploads have been given and how many downloads, and then they will try to upload, and then we'll see. Then they will try to see that has this number here increased. Why? They want to see that uh, did their upload go through. The idea is that uh, Reddit has some algorithms to catch accounts that are used by bots and then to ban those accounts. So the bot tries to find out, am I banned or not, by watching when does this number on the screen increase. So to make it uh, uh, less uh, obvious, right? obvious to the bots, they're skewing with these numbers here. So sometimes you're going to post that hey, this has four upvotes, one download. Sometimes you might see it has five upvotes. Sometimes you might see it has uh, three upvotes, two downloads. Okay. It will mess with these numbers just awesome. to mess with the bots. So we posted this on uh, Learn Programming, and let's see, is it... Are we on the front page? We are! We are on the fourth front page. Oh, jeez. So basically, I think we should turn, out, turn off the stream for a moment yeah. and see if the recording is okay. Uh, yeah. Because we want to post this on uh, YouTube. Facebook, or YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, it should be on Twitch anyway. Yeah. But... Uh, YouTube's more awesome. Yeah, I like YouTube. So, yeah, I like it. So, we're taking a break now. And we'll see you and some devils in a bit. 30 yeah. minutes about, about some. And everybody, be a better programmer. Yeah, become a better programmer. Totally. Yes. Awesome. See you later. See ya.